1995, this, this couple recorded footage on their VHS camera that passing through that city, they, give, they gave the tape to this old man that lived in a random trailer. And that man didn't want that footage to be seen anywhere. He's the only one that had it. The only one that had this footage. And me and Logan found out about that. So we wanted to go there, go in the middle of nowhere and try to buy this footage off of him. How am I on a first class flight to Qatar right now, going to the World oh, Cup? Hey, how, like how? Dream, what the bro. F I, what is a fucking Mexican doing in this group full of CEO? Logan always says, I'm fucked. I've seen too much, too young. But like, not a lot of people know that a fucking full blooded Mexican is behind the scenes Logan Paul stuff, you know? Exactly. I want people to know that. I want people to know that someone like me that came from a little ass town in LA that his first job was in Subway, was able to be the right hand man of one of the biggest influencer superstars in the world right now, you know? Don't forget to like, this is gonna be the most liked episode. What's up friends and welcome back to IE and Friends. My name is Saul Gomez. My name is Caesar. My name is Erin. And today we got a very special guest. He is literally uh, trailblazing documentary documentary is that a Do word documentary, documentary. Just make it documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah the the social media revolution ladies and gentlemen we got kevin galvan yeah. underscore paul yeah. Yeah. Underscore Paul. Yeah. Mr. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. thank you for paul. joining us bro we're hey, honestly thank we're... you guys for having me bro this is fucking crazy my first podcast i'm a little, just a little bit nervous but we should be chilling take Sick. a shot now nah, yeah oh yeah should we take I a shot we should. We <laughs> he said, I, I, that said yeah. He's like, I'm going to start it off. Right? For the cheers. For the guys, cheers. You guys want some shit? Let's do it. The little bit of prime chaser. Yeah, little bit of oh, yeah, prime. that's true, huh? Where's that? Shout out to prime. I don't condone chasing it with prime, but this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. You know? I never chased it with <laughs> I'm prime. I'm used to the Red, Red Bull vodka, so why not? Uh, uh, tequila and prime. Prime energy vodka. Tequila and prime. Ah, uh, cheers. Cheers, cheers everybody. Boys. Cheers. Oh, my bad, guys. Cheers, boy. Got some egos, bro. Is it? Yes, sir. Blanquito. That Casa Amigos. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty good together. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I finished the Casa Amigos bottle by itself. Just like, you no, I'm like saying, like, oh, together? It's fire. That was pretty fire. Are you okay? Like, you, 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 did you just say you finished the Casa yeah, Amigos bottle by yourself? Red Bull Walkers now. Bro, <laughs> it's Tequila <laughs> Prime. I can't even, red, I can't even say the name, bro. Red Bull. Yeah. Every, yeah. every time I post it, bro, he puts it on the I said it, I was like, fuck, should I even say that? Nah, you have to cut that, bro. That's the one we get back. Like, when, I say, when I say that word, dude. You guys yeah. like Casamigos or what? Yeah, I think Casamigos. Is that's that what my, you guys uh, usually drink? Uh, yeah, I think Casamigos would be like if I'm like if I have to order if someone's like oh you, what bottle you want I'll say Casamigos. Casamigos. But if I'm at the bar I'll go for the cheapest tequila they got. You guys like uh, uh, tequila on the rocks? Just like that. Just sipping yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll get fucked. It has up. to be. It has to be añejo though. Añejo's so good. Remember mm -hmm. last year the um, LAC thing when i drank oh, that big ass bottle i had i had a large cup of mcdonald's yeah and i poured all the tequila in there I throughout the throughout, in. <laughs> throughout the fucking concert like the whole hours we were there yeah. but i was just sipping on that the whole day you Bro, know they what didn't, they didn't check they didn't check the cup i mean usually they they, we went, they won't through security right? it was like i've so noticed then. there's when it comes to drinking there's levels to things so i think when you're first when you're like 18 19 when you're first getting into drink, drinking I think that's when you're hitting like the cans. You we don't know, condone. You got, you got the four locals. Yeah, we don't Bro, condone. We don't condone locals. Locals. Yeah, You got the four locals. You got the buzz balls. And then when you're hitting your twenties, what do you guys? Oh, the beatbox. I think twenties is more like beatboxes beatbox. and buzz balls. Beatbox. I started beatbox with fucking. Uh, can I curse on this? Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Are fuck they yeah. Is it gonna be get bleeped out or what? Nah, no. Nah, yeah. Bro, I, I was thinking about it on the way here. Like, fuck, what if? They don't allow me to swear because I swear a lot. Oh, bro. we swear a lot too. But I want to try not to swear. That's because like it, you sound bad sometimes. Like just saying fucking shit all the time. That's bro. what. Yeah, we, they're filler words. Yeah, yeah they're filler words. Exactly. Yeah. You just use them all the time, which are bad, bro. Yeah, that's fucking right. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah, fucking uh shit. So <laughs> fuck shit. Bro. But yeah, um, I'm actually. I don't think you guys know who Kevin is yet. We haven't really. Get if you don't, don't know, if you don't know who Kevin fuck is, are you doing? He's the man behind <laughs> the camera, and the man behind the scenes of everything yeah. you see Wait, on um, the Logan Paul social media. Social media. Yes, sir. Yeah, and most of the Prime stuff as well. Oh really? All the all the prime like photography. Uh, not eighty percent of it. Yeah. Like most of it comes like photos and video that's usually like on the go and not produced in like a set. Is usually coming from me. Oh, oh like when you're flying randomly, on organically, which is amazing. Super blessed to be part of yeah. prime team and doing that with them. But for sure, I, that's one thing. Like, how did you end up in that position? How did you go from taking like just photos to end up working with like Logan Paul and his team? 
Damn. That that's it's crazy because there's a whole story of how I even got into doing what I love in a way. Yeah. Cause right after high right after high school, you you kind of get like pressured into going to college and getting like that four-year degree yeah 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 so that's the only thing you want to do when you get out of high school and that's what i did i wanted to do a four-year degree in cal state dominguez hills which is okay. in carson yeah, yeah, yeah. and i went in as a nursing degree i believe for the first year but since i didn't do so well on most of like the pre-entry tests yeah, yeah. i didn't start off doing any nursing shit or any other stuff that i really wanted to work on i was working on like intermediate classes or like yeah. English classes, math classes and stuff. And I didn't really like it. So when it came to like thinking about what I actually want to do for my life, yeah. I thought about it really hard because like even in those first two years, I wasn't doing anything that had to do mm -hmm. with none of that. So I started off as nursing and I started just thinking about what I actually like to do, what interests me. And psychology was another thing that kind of caught my attention, okay. you know, because I like the study of people or people. sociology maybe, <laughs> like, or like like the study of why people do certain things and yeah, yeah. their mindset and stuff so that kind of was a little interest to me at the beginning which is why i switched it uh to psychology in the beginning of the second year of mm -hmm. going to college and while i was doing that i was still doing the beginner math classes beginner english classes and i had a class that was called, I think, like film production or something like that. Oh, I was like sick. a random class. Yeah. And I was doing that. And we weren't really doing much in that class, honestly. We were honestly just watching movies and doing like, hypo like not hypothesis, like summaries about the movies or gotcha. like, excuse me, yeah. uh, like trying to explain what the movie is about in yeah. film production terms. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's what made me open my eyes a little bit into thinking about what I really want to do for the rest of my life. Because I, I was thinking about me finishing the degree and a psychology degree. And if I was even going to be happy waking up every single day, yeah, going yeah. to work. And my honest answer was no. And I had two or a few counselors around that I would ask for advice on what they think I should do if I should stay in psychology or switch my degree to something I actually like, like film production mm -hmm. at Dominguez Hills. And everywhere I went, the same piece of advice came back to me, which was do what you love and the money will follow. Like, yeah. like I said at the beginning, you get pressured into going into these four-year colleges because you want to make good money. You want to be that Latino in your family that, gets, that, got, the, that got the paper. That right. got the paper, that got the, got the bachelor's degree, that has a good job because that's what you're kind of conditioned to wanting to do your whole life. Yeah. But I didn't, I don't know if I wanted to do that. I don't know if I wanted to go that regular route. And when people, when most of my counselors uh, gave me that advice to do what I love and just everything will follow behind that, I kind of just went straight into that and started thinking what I really love to do. And my passion my whole life since the beginning was like taking pictures, oh, taking okay, videos, like editing random little th stuff, taking pictures of flowers, uh, making videos of me and my brother wrestling and yeah. randomly editing them on iMovie. And that's what I came to. Like, I love, I love taking videos. I love taking pictures. So let me go into something that I really like and if, let's see if it works out or not. Mm -hmm. And that move was literally moving schools, like quitting Cal State Dominguez Hills and going into this film production school called LA Film School, oh, right on Hollywood, yeah. like right on the sh fucking on Sunset? Sunset Boulevard, uh, LA, LA Film Production School, which I saw like an add on randomly, like scrolling through somewhere. And I saw it, I looked at it. And they said that they were enrolling every single month mm. and they had tours every single month. And that kind of intrigued me into wanting to do, wanting to at least check it out and see if I liked it or not. Yeah. And at the time, uh, I felt the most pressure from my dad because I was, even though I'm the middle child in my family, I was the first one to go to college, uh, to a four year yeah. college, like an actual. And I felt that pressure from my dad because he was paying it out of pocket like FAFSA never gave us money to mm -hmm. help us out in a way so I felt that pressure from my dad to like actually do that four year degree so I would go to the tours with my mom and not tell my dad oh, second wow. year in second year in my semester like during the beginning I started doing tours uh, let's say in May of 2019 I, I would say uh -huh. and then the second semester started in August so I was doing tours trying to figure out what I actually wanted to do before I go into my second semester of mm -hmm. psychology. And I went on a tour with my mom around May and I started looking around at this film production school that had top of the line sets, top of the line cameras, 
all these crazy classes. Your instructors are film producers or cinematographers that have been working uh, in this industry for 10 plus years and it, it triggered me even more. And yeah. like, I think there on the spot, I started to enroll in that. When I saw that there, it was a high possibility of me like getting actually accepted into this, I enrolled, got accepted. Maybe it's July, a month from starting my second semester in. And at the time I was working at Subway, which oh, was my first job That's at the up. food court at yeah. Dominguez Hills. So my dad would take me to work at the food court yeah. every single, every, not every single day, but most of the time, take me to work and see kids coming out. And then oh, uh, him realizing that school is resuming, school is about to start. Yeah, and the questions at, came yeah. every, single, every single day. He dropped me off like, hey, when is school starting? When is your class starting? And I was like, soon, <laughs> soon. Uh, I think it's starting <laughs> soon. And it was, um, I think it was like a week before I was starting my second semester where I had to really come clean with my dad into what I really wanted to do. And it was like this night at dinner, me and him were like just talking and I kind of just started to talk to him about it. And when I told him that I didn't want to follow that four year degree plan, that I felt that pressure from him that he didn't know subconscious that he was giving me pressure to finish his four year degree. Uh, I told him about it. That I don't, I don't want to do this. I want to follow what I love and I want to really want to wake up every single morning and mm -hmm do what I love to do. So because of that, I haven't told you, but I did this tour with my mom and I got accepted to this film production school. And this is what I'm doing. Like, like it or not, it's my life. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. I want to live what I want to live. So I'm going to go into the film production school and see how that goes, you know? And he, at the beginning, he, I, I saw like a little bit of sadness and confusion in his face. Mm -hmm. And he said a few words, he went to shower, he came back, it had another conversation. He kind of felt like in the shower, he understood yeah. that it's not his life, it's my life. And he supported me 100%. Oh, wow, that's what's up. 100% through. He came out and we had another talk, supporting me uh, with me switching, making that move. And in my head, if I was going to make that move, I'm going to go, fuck, I'm going to go 100%. Yeah. I'm, this is going to be the thing that I'm going to do, COC. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Because I'm going to do it and there's no, other, there's no other option. I'm not yeah. going to go back to, to do a psychology degree. Yeah. Because I failed at this. Like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all in. Exactly. I go into the school, and it's such a weird it's such a weird thing to have because you start off with a group of classmates, and every single month you switch uh, what class you're in with those classmates. So you're moving every single month to a different class or a different, like, uh, part of the film production associate's degree is what it's called. Mm -hmm. So you start moving with everyone together, and month in and month out, started realizing that I really, really fucking love this shit. Oh, I, yes, I yeah. really love this. And what's cool about that film production school was that in the first two days, you do like PowerPoints of what the whole class is going to be about, what to expect, what you guys are going to do. And then the rest of the month is hands-on. You're on set. You're on set doing this. You're helping uh, the main... The, there's three main people in a film production. There's the producer, director, yeah. cinematographer. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's them three or people working under them. And when you're doing projects like that in school, working with all your classmates that you move every single month, you get used to doing it and you start loving it a bit more. Yeah. And these 12 hour days that are just on the set pass by like four hours. Nice. You start really realizing that, damn, 12 hours happened like nothing. Yeah. And it felt like two or three. I really, really like this shit. I really love this shit. Month in and month out, uh, I was chosen to be in every single class, like the top head oh, to, to like do it's those like, projects yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And I was, since the beginning of the first class, I got like together with this Ukrainian guy. His uh -huh. name is Leo. Shout out Leo. Hey, Leo. Uh, ever since then, we kind of just like got each other's chemistry and what we think creatively and how we want the outcome of uh, specific like films to be. So month in and month out, we did all the projects together and we were always chosen for him to be the director, me a cinematographer. And we got to do all these crazy projects and crazy sets with amazing equipment, yeah. like just working together. And I started to realize that I really love this. And COVID started hitting oh, during school. the last three or four months yeah. where everything started to, um, started to go online. And it was kind of weird because the whole Cause point no of that school- It's a handset yeah, type of thing. The whole point of that school is being hands-on yeah, and yeah. doing all this stuff with your classmates and like getting actual experience from moving all this. So when it moved to online, it kind of started like losing a little bit of motivation mm -hmm. because like, 
it was just like I, I wanted to be hands on. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to do yeah. everything. You don't want to be with like everyone. reading and yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The yeah. Part, yeah. And I guess I did those first two classes, which I guess I got lucky because the two classes that I did do online were supposed to be online anyways, mm-hmm. like English math classes or like budgeting and stuff. Yeah, you didn't really have to be in person, so I got a little bit lucky. And it's weird how the butterfly effect is real and everything happens for a reason because. I graduated in August, and I was supposed to graduate in July. And Leo, my friend, told me, because we were supposed to skip the July class so that we can do our last class in person in mm-hmm. September. So we are supposed to skip July and August so we could come back in September and October and finish the classes then. But we are talking, and I wanted to wait and do it hands-on, finish the last two classes hands-on, but my friend Leo told me, nah, we should just finish them right now. Yeah. Let's do July, let's finish July, let's finish August, and let's just go straight to our bachelor's degree. So just finish this shit fast, let's yeah. do it. I was like, all right, let's do it, fuck it. And we did the July class, the last class was August, which was a digital marketing class, which I learned a lot from and was doing a bunch of the work. But it's weird, I was about to graduate, and I was on my on my computer doing like one of the last works in the last week, last two weeks. And I see this tweet from this guy, Logan Paul. Oh shit. This fella? I see this, this fella. <laughs> this fella. This fella, maybe, this you fella know. on this app that used to be called Twitter. Oh yeah. God, uh, long time, long time. <laughs> long time ago, bro. Uh, I see him say something along the lines of, uh, I needed a position to be filled for like a 12 hour a day videography slash editing gig. Um, with someone who is willing and able to do this with me, you know? Yeah. And under the replies, I saw a bunch of like verified people and people like that have been in the business for a while just comment and try to get the job off of, like the comments. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, bro, he's not going to look through his Twitter comments. He's going to look through like sources that he actually wants to look for a specific videographer, photographer that fits his team, you know? Yeah. It's not a look at his Twitter comments. And I started thinking, let me try to email him, find, try to find his email in a way. And I looked everywhere, I looked everywhere. I looked at his websites, I looked at like his Instagram, I didn't find none of his email anywhere. And in like his clothing store in a website, I went all the way at the bottom to like contact us. I saw an email that said like, Logan, Oh, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have to believe that, but and then, <laughs> everyone just goes in there and up, 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 up. But uh, I see this, I see this email, and I'm like, this is fucking, this is not him, bro. Let me, like, let me yeah, it sounds like this. such an interesting email. Like, a, I should have thought of this. It's not his email. It's too good to be so, true, so, bro. So, so, like, so old dot com. Yeah, it's not like, bro, what? So weird ass email. Like, this is not him. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna go back to doing my work. Yeah. I go back. I'm doing my one of my last works for this digital marketing class. Five minutes and ten minutes, and I'm like, fuck, what's the worst that can happen? Let me just send something to this Logan Paul <laughs> gmail.com guy. And I go in, I send literally like this just introduction paragraph, kind of just like stating my name, saying what I do, what I'm doing right now in film school, what I'm able to do in film school, mm. how hungry I am to work for him, and how willing and able I am to be with him 24 7, like he said on his tweet. And like two or three hours later, what up, G? Oh, Let me see your work. What? I was like, wait, wait, wait. I think this is him. How'd yeah. you feel? How'd you feel when you saw that that, that email? I, like, I forget. What was like the- I forget where I was. I probably was in bed or like on the way somewhere. But I saw his email that says, "What up, G? Let me see most of your work." I was like, "What the? Fuck? I think this is him. This is how he talks." I yeah. think. I was like, "All right, let me fucking compile everything." And like I said earlier, you send your brother's wrestling. That's where you got the inspo to go. He's like, because of Kevin, man, I wanted to wrestle, dude. He's like, Kevin, he's got me with the pictures for the wrestling events. <laughs> nah, but uh, I started like compiling all this stuff that I did. I used to do like YouTube videos of like pranks here and there, like random, or like I used to film uh, random montages and kind of edit them with the music that's going behind them of like little trips I would do to like Rosarito or like yeah. to Mexico, Guadalajara and stuff. And I sent a few of those in, but what I, the most of the stuff that I really sent in, like the chunk of it, was all the film production stuff that I did in school. Ooh. Nice. All of it, all of it. And since I was always chosen with Leo to be one of the main heads to do most of these uh, projects, projects I, I had a bunch of stuff to send in, yeah. and a bunch of clips, and a bunch of little, like different clips, and like different projects that were crazy sets with crazy cameras that were d- credited by me and my friend, yeah, yeah. you know? So I was able to send all that in with the, 
more in detail paragraph about what I actually do, what's my name, where I come from, and all this stuff. It was like two separate paragraphs. And the email that came after that was, all right, I'm going to forward you to my assistant. You're going to have a, like a FaceTime call with her if that's okay. I was on the way back from like a doctor appointment. She face she has a FaceTime call with me. I pull over. We're like just talking there. I kind of just want to show her. I knew they wanted to just feel me out and yeah. see the type of person I was. So I just I was just chill with her. I was just being myself with her, being cool with her. Uh, we had like a five minute FaceTime conversation, and then at the end of it, she goes, "Okay, um, this was amazing. Uh, I'll let you know what the team wants to do after, and we'll message you eventually or whatever." And I was like, "All right, we'll leave it there." And then I didn't know when they were gonna message me back. So the next morning, she goes. Hey, can you have a? Uh, is it okay if you have a Facetime call right now with Logan? I was like, Oh, Damn. actually, can we do it? He, they said like in 15, 20 minutes. I was like, Actually, can we do it right now? Because I'm like going somewhere and I have to do, I have to do like a dentist appointment or something. Yeah, yeah. Can we actually do it right now? They're like, Yeah, just wait like five minutes and we'll call you. I have this call with Logan, and he kind of just explains what the job is about. If I'm willing to do it, this and this, he kind of gets a feel of the type of person I am, what I like to do, what I am as a person, and. We hung up, we finished the call, it went amazing, and five minutes later, she messaged me saying if I want to come over to the house Ooh. to get like a little test day in or something. Yeah, yeah. And at the moment, I didn't know if they were testing a bunch of people, so I didn't know if a bunch of people were going to be there. But uh, I feel like me telling her that I wanted to do it now right, and right away oh, okay. made me be the first one to be on that call yeah, you know, like, and be considered for yeah. the job. So they called me in that next day. And I go in, and it was during the time, I think, where he hurt his hand somehow doing some dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> he hurt his hand, and he was supposed to film that day and the next day. But then he said, like, oh, I don't know if we're going to film today, so, like, just chill and be, like, hang around with, like, everyone and see how they like you and stuff. So I was just killing, chilling with everyone. Everyone was cool as fuck with me. Everyone was welcoming. And then I told him at the end of the day that, I was in the process of signing my bachelor's degree papers to like start that up again. And that's like due in the next week. So if like you're not going to film for two weeks, I don't know if I want to, if I want to dive into this, I'm going to have to do it now. Cause if not, I'm going to have to go Damn, you're, straight into my bachelor's. You apply the pressure. You apply I, pressure. I, I, not, not in that way, but I said like, Hey, I'm, my bachelor's degree is coming up. I either do that, which is in a week, or I dive into this. Yeah, it just shows like who you are, though. It's like, in okay, a way, I, I feel like it did. I'm like, I'm, I'm a, is it, it's this or this, bro? Like, you want to keep me here, or should yeah. I go and sign this bachelor's degree? It's kind of like you knew your worth, like, in a way. In yeah, a, like, in a way, you're like, hey, like, I would love to work for you, but I also have this other thing that I also love to do. Subconsciously, I, yes, but like, I just didn't want to be left out and not sign this bachelor's yeah. degree, you know? So I told him, and then he started thinking. He was just thinking there on the table. He says, actually, I think Jake is shooting a music video tomorrow. Just come to that, and we'll see what happens. And I go to the music video. I shoot the whole day with him. I mic him up. We do like a different form of content because before this, he was doing like vlog style, mm -hmm. wide angle type of stuff, and he wanted to switch it up because he was going to start this subscription service called Maverick Club which he wanted a more documentary-esque okay. version of his life, which is what he brought me in for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a random camera, long lens, I mic'd them up, and the whole day he did like a music video shoot with Jake. And the next day he did a mi music video shoot with the Kid Leroy, so I was just like doing that with him. And I guess he really, really liked how I work and how I work with him and what I do like behind the scenes for him. So he started inviting me like day in and day out, yeah. sixth, seventh day, eighth wow. day, and doing like random shit at the house. And then um, he tells me that he has a trip coming up to Colorado because he's going to give away his car to like one of his new subscribers from the Maverick Club. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I wanted to go on the trip with him. And I go with him. We do this whole trip. We film this whole video. And at the end of like a dinner, it was so weird. I remember this so vividly. We're in the car and I kind of tell him like jokingly while, while lighting up a joint, I tell him jokingly like, hey, they're lighting it up. Hey, um, I'm not trying to be like mess up or anything but like am i in or am i not like, i've just <laughs> yeah. been coming i haven't done anything i haven't signed anything like what's good like i'm joking am i in or am i not he's like actually bro like on the way back first thing is like you're in you're like we have a contract for you ready like up. while he's lighting a blunt passing the team that's like badass. what the fuck that's is happening vibe, yeah. that's crazy <laughs> that's a vibe, bro, that's a vibe. <laughs> he's like nah bro yeah you're in dude no you're he's in. like he's lighting the blunt he's like actually bro like i think you feel like a glove <laughs> like, bad, we're, gonna, like, we're gonna get you. Uh, so dope, we're gonna get dude. you locked in. I'm like, what? What is happening? Like, I guess this is this is the way it's this gonna is, happen. We yeah. go back, we get that settled, 
And not even like two weeks in, they asked me like, oh, what's holding you back from moving in? The house. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. uh, I guess nothing. <laughs> you just never asked I was waiting for you guys to ask, honestly. <laughs> I guess nothing's holding me back, but like, I mean, let me ask my mom, let me ask my parents. Yeah. Let me sleep on it for like a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some shit. And I go, as it, a week passes, and his manager's first thing, first thing on Monday is like, hey, have you thought about it? What are you going to do? I'm like, actually, let's do it. Let me move in. Because like, that's what the job required in a way yeah, for me there. to be there 24 7 mm -hmm. you know so i moved in and she was just history from there bro we That's i was dope. living in la with him for like six months uh he decided to move to puerto rico yeah which she told me if i wanted to come with him and that was like the deciding factor of like if you're gonna, you're gonna do this or not and i was like i'm, I'm in bro like you're taking me to puerto rico or yeah, no yeah. one bro yeah and he took me to puerto rico We've been living in Puerto Rico for two and a half years now, and ever since then, we've just been going in and out with random projects, random events, and just the craziest yeah. experiences and things that I've never thought I'd see in my life, you yeah. know? That's yeah. amazing. Bro. That's crazy, an amazing like, fucking honestly, story, bro. I fucking <laughs> oh, love crazy. It, bro. And ever, ever since I went to Puerto Rico, it's just been... Everything just started from then. It's been nonstop ever yeah. since. Nonstop ever since. Ever since the Floyd fight, 99 originals, just back to back to back to back to back stuff. Yeah, which is crazy. What did your dad like think about all this? Because yeah. like I feel like he was a like you know you, you didn't want to disappoint him and stuff. Yeah. But, like, now you're doing like your goal and stuff. Like what did your? It's weird because in a way I feel like my parents expected me to do something big. Mm -hmm. And in my head I always said like I'm a, I'm gonna do something. I want to do something. And even when I was working in Subway. I was in the back doing this. I'm like, fuck, bro, I don't fucking belong here, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna fucking, I wanna do something, I wanna do something. And I guess they felt that hunger in me that I was, they expected me to do something big. Yeah. So when I did do this, they were hesitant at the beginning because at the time, Logan was a big character, but he wasn't as household as he is mm -hmm. now, you know? He was just one of the biggest YouTubers, yeah. you know? And YouTube at the time was like, oh, you like either YouTube make thing. it or you yeah. don't. Like, you're not making that much money. Like, he's making the money, you know? Yeah. So. It was kind of mixed emotions because they were they always said they were proud of me but they weren't like super is ecstatic because they mm -hmm. kind of expected me to do something like this you know mm -hmm. so like it was always a bit of confusion on their end because i mean a job like this doesn't it's not it's, it's not, not it's not normal it's not yeah. a normal job so everything that i go through and do they just have to trust that it's right for me and that it's gonna take me in a good yeah. path you know mm -hmm. So like they trusted that they trusted me and it's been it's been good ever since. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. I love to hear about that though. Is your parents expecting it from you? That's cool. I don't know if they did, but like their reactions towards me doing big things were not fucking crazy. So I thumbs up emojis like as you should. Yeah, so I felt like they expected it. No, it's dope because like they could have been like you know like uh you know supporting you but also like not expecting much. Yeah. Because like you know when you like when we first started this I don't know like like to be truthful like my parents weren't like super like supportive of it they're like why are you doing it you know get a real job this night blah blah right you know now that we've done a couple things you know um they like they didn't they, they were supportive but they're also like not expecting anything they were just they probably were like seeing like oh he's gonna like it's probably gonna be a failure like who the fuck does this type of shit yeah. all that type of stuff right i mean every, i feel like most parents that have kids doing this now or just don't know what's gonna happen yeah most of them don't make it out yeah it's very <laughs> unsure it's a harsh yeah. reality yeah. but it's like, like new too it's like it, yeah. youtube hasn't been around forever mm -hmm. like, like yeah, yeah you could become, become viral, viral but can you maintain that? can you yeah, contain yeah. it and yeah. la make it last that's the that's the thing to do you, you have, know what if I'm you saying? have kevin behind the scenes <laughs> you can't <laughs> or if you have a mindset like yeah it's a crazy the mindset. Ass mindset you can do yeah it, like yeah nowadays anyone can become viral right there's many viral videos all the time all the like all the time but like But can you contain that, make it a, a career, make it a profession, this and that? Exactly. And that's dope, bro. Like your parents had that expectation. Mm -hmm. Like you're like you're probably like, oh, like where's my fucking congrats and this and that. <laughs> I mean, I get like the proud, a proud of you. Shit, yeah, like, but but like but that's dope because they're like, you know what? If you wanted to do this, we expect you to be make some do some big things. That's pretty yeah. dope. Bro. But I don't even think I want that big like congratulations. And shit, it's just you know? it's just a job. It's, it's at okay. That end it's cool. Like. like It used to seem like an unobtainable job at the time, and like even when I got, it, I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Like I really got this, but like now it's like it's weird that I got jaded to what I'm actually doing. I feel like you've just you've been like especially this year and everything Logan's been doing, and you've just been like documenting it all. It's just so much and all these crazy fun things you're doing, all this traveling you're doing, all these like just all the, all these memories you're you're just living like like really fast and the next day you're doing something else yeah. especially with the 99 day original where something something it was always moving how did you how, how how do you like take a step back and realize and just like take it all in and be in the moment damn 
That's a hard question because because we are always on and always moving, the only real instances where I get to really reflect on what I'm doing is when we're not doing anything, when we have that one to two week span of just chilling and resting. Because when we do go back to PR, that's all we do. We rest, Mm. gym, eat, sleep, and repeat. Because a week comes and you're all 24 seven just moving. So I feel like those times are the times where I look back and reflect on like the past trips or on the future trips that are about to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's weird weird to say this, but I like to do edibles because I used to smoke a lot back then, like a lot, like pens and wax. So recently, (laughs) 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 recently I just been, uh, these past six months, I just been doing edibles just to sleep. Because that's the main thing that was worrying to me when I wanted to stop smoking was it's hard for me to sleep. And that's one of the most important things I think for this job is learning how to sleep and mm. when to sleep, bro. Because sleep is the most important yeah, thing yeah. you need, especially when you're traveling and switching time changes every single time, you know? You want to just sleep and rest. So that's why I do edibles. I, when I go on flights, I do edibles. Yeah. But when I am in these high state states of minds, I think about it even more. Like, I'm high and I'm thinking, like, how am I on the way... How am I on a first class plane flight to Norway Qatar right now, that's going crazy. to the World oh, Cup? Oh yeah, you yeah that's crazy, crazy, bro. That's just insane. Like, how? Like, how? Dream, what the bro. Like, I, 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 live, I live vicariously through Kevin. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm we like, there. Me? We're there. I'm just, I'm, I'm living in your life right now, bro. I'm, I'm like, like, we're there. Yeah. Yeah. The part that I was just like, bro, that's fucking sick. Was when you met Rey Mysterio. Yeah, bro. that bro. Uh, then you even met John Cena too, no? Like yeah, there's meeting a few, all few these wrestlers. My goat, my goat, my goat too. My yeah. goat. I was bro. John Cena first and Ray just, when I was little. Really? But uh, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm in these high states of minds on the way to the World Cup, thinking like, what am I doing? I'm I'm on a fucking expensive ass flight because the production allowed it to go into this expensive ass. Fucking hotel and shit. tournament, hotel, city, and I'm just here to work. Literally yeah. doing what I wanted to do since the beginning. Yes. Work and do what I love, you know? Yeah. And when I'm resting and when I'm high as fuck <laughs> is when I realize and get to look back and <clears throat> take a step back and realize what I'm actually doing yeah. for my job and f- for the people around me, you know? Nah, that's beautiful. That's dude. Do you ever yeah. like... Because from where you were at, from being like working at Subway to like now traveling Sub- the Subway world. was my first job. Yeah. This was my second job. I was, that's yeah, insane. That's crazy. <laughs> you ever go back to Subway? Like to that same Subway you used to work at? I haven't. No, since, you haven't? Since then. It, I still keep in touch with like my main co-workers there. That's yeah. what's up. And they're always keeping in touch with me, congratulating me, saying they're proud of me and stuff. But I, I have yet to go back Do to Do you ever that. just walk into Subway and be like... Yeah, is it freshly cut today? Yeah, I know the process. I'm just saying. He's like, let me smell the bread. I, I, used to, <laughs> I used to make this very specific sandwich in my break. So every yeah. time I go to uh, Subway, I expect them to do it that way. And when yeah. they do, I'm like, come on, bro. I know you can do it. <laughs> I, I know you can. I know you can do that, bro. You're come like, on, you put bro. the hot Cheetos in the, in the like, sandwich? Hey, bro, let, let me suit up real quick, man. Yeah. I know the process. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Nah, that's great. Do you ever do you ever get like um like imposter syndrome from just Ooh. being out in these places? Every single time. Yeah. Especially when you're high. It's a, it's a little bit of a fuck the situation because when you are high all the time you get into this like derealization what's that we're making up words today it's okay derealization (laughs) where you're like seeing your life happen in a third person point of view Mm -hmm. in a way yeah and imposter syndrome kind of goes hand in hand with that because yeah you are in this big ass events and you're you're doing these things and then you look around and it feels like you're watching it in a movie mm. and you yeah. can't seem to like finally like get out of that imposter syndrome, you know? But uh, Logan taught me this really early on that he even feels this imposter syndrome, you know? Oh, wow. And you can't, if you're still in the state of mind of not believing where you are or not really... Like processing what's going processing on. what's going on, you have to just come to a a, a fucking point that you're there for a reason. Mm-hmm. You're there for a reason. Um, 
you're in this situation because you made it happen for yourself some way or another or life's butterfly effect made it happen for you mm -hmm. and the only way you get to continue to grow and grow out of that and start getting into different mindsets is getting into the mindset of i'm here for a reason and i'm supposed to be here you know yeah, 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 i'm supposed like to be here i'm here for a reason let me continue on because when you get stuck in that imposter syndrome you don't you stay there you start seeing your life as a movie in the third person, it doesn't let you grow out of that because you still don't believe that you're that you're you're, you're like in capable of being you. in there, you know, yeah. or being the person that's doing the things you're doing. Yeah. Like which you sometimes feel like you don't belong in that. Yeah, you yeah, don't belong. Yeah, okay. Like what, what is a fucking Mexican doing in this group full of like, CEO yeah. white? You know, let them fucking there, know, bro. Let them <laughs> you know. know. What am I? What you am I? There, what bro. am I doing here, bro? But then you just have to get into that state of mind of i'm here for a reason i made this happen for myself let's grow let's continue growing let's continue to move out of this because it, it's it's fucked up you get in you get in that state of mind for so long and yeah. people don't know how to get out of it yeah bro i can't imagine because like like we've been to we've been to events but like no, nothing compares to like the events you're going to <laughs> so i can only imagine how you feel like i remember like when we go to any events that we get invited to yeah i feel the same way bro i'm like dude i don't like i look at everyone that's around right I'm like, dude, I, f I don't feel like I'm the same as everyone. I feel like I'm just like, I always like feel like I'm just lower for some reason. But then like people are only worrying about themselves. Mm -hmm. So you also got to worry about that too. Like people are not worrying about you. They're worrying about themselves. They bro. probably feel yeah. the same way. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. That's, but in my mind, Logan I'm like, fucking Paul feels like that, yeah. bro. The biggest superstar right now yeah. feels that he doesn't belong where he is. That's insane. That's a really yeah. insane. Yeah. That's crazy. I think, yeah, I I've heard like this one thing, uh, like some advice about when you go to like networking events is that everybody in there, they all feel like they don't belong. And yeah. Just with that, so knowing that. Fucking, yeah, keep, we're, yeah, we're all equal in that. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody's nervous. Everybody doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. And you just bond yeah. that way, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just go to someone, hey, are you nervous too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah me too. Are you single? That's the best way to start a conversation too. If you're, you're actually nervous? like nervous and stuff, just say your flaws straight up. Like, oh, fuck, I'm nervous to be here. Or yeah. like... Just say your flaws straight and up. And, like me too, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> most of the time, most everyone's feeling like that. Yeah. You just got to get out of that mindset. And yeah. Just continue working and doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Out of you know? out of like all of the like crazy things, do you have like one that you're like, oh shit, like I really did this? Like, like a, of, a moment. Everything, a moment. Yeah. Like that you're like, whoa. Like I really was just a part of this, mm -hmm. or like a like an event. Like when you did like, like a, the ninety nine, like a project or like a moment. Yeah, like the ninety nine originals. Like, you did a lot of things, it. right? Yeah. You did like a bunch of things. Was there one that you were just like, oh shit, like I really created the ninety nine originals as a whole in project was an insane thing to yeah. be a part of because it was literally just me and Logan. Logan thought of it. I brainstormed. He thought of it. I thought of one. He brainstormed on it. We came up with an idea before we even shoot it. Like everything just came randomly and it came out so amazing, yeah. which I'm a proud of. But I feel like the biggest thing that people in my position would want to do is do a Super Bowl commercial, mm. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And you did that. Exactly. You? Yeah. That's, that's wild. That's, that's one of like the big accomplishments that I can kind of remember where I saw it on TV and I'm like, what? I did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I filmed all that. You know, that's oh, what I bet that was a crazy yeah. like a film pro film production people or photographers in my shoes in my age that's like their, see it as like their end goal yeah. in a way, mm -hmm. and it just happened because it was brought up to me as, as a random opportunity because of Prime. Yeah. yeah, so it felt so easily obtainable, but it's such a big goal that I overshadowed. When while I was looking at it, I kind of realized, damn, I I did this. Yeah, and there's Super Bowl commercial. What? Yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember you, I was at work and like we were watching the Super Bowl, and I was like, y'all to make sure this fucking prime commercial goes on. Like, don't take off the TV. <laughs> Wait, you knew it was gonna go on. Yeah, you you. I think you. Oh, you I, said, said it, I said it. Yeah, said and I was it. like, bro, we're watching this, and I'm like, why? And I was like, bro, my homie, like, he did this. And like we were all watching, they're like, "What the fuck, bro?" I'm upset because yeah. I was in the bathroom when it came on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. too. Oh, I, remember, I remember because my my um, it was I was at, at my homie's house. <laughs> I was at my homie's house, and then I came back from the bathroom. And he was like, "Oh, there was a Prime commercial." I was like, "No fuck!" I was like, "No fucking way!" <laughs> like, dude. Did it on YouTube. Oh, like, I had to go on like, YouTube like, the next day and look at it, bro. Like, we posted wow, that shit because yeah, I feel like it, it, it was it had to be one of those pieces that had to be up somehow. Yeah, yeah. See, so your resume is like insane, right? So what's, like, for you, and you're still so young, what do you think is, like, 30-year-old Kevin going to be getting wow. into? Like, what's, what's your, what? because I feel like the doors are open to whatever you want to do, but, like, where do you see yourself? Where do you want to be when you're 30 and maybe that future? Six years from now, when I'm 30. Uh, my plan, 
my whole plan with doing what I love was not having to worry about the income that's coming in. So I'm able to do what I love, you yeah. know, but because of the job I'm in, I'm doing what I love with a good income, but it's not going to last forever, you know? Mm-hmm. So my plan is to uh, start doing real estate in like a few years, two or three years, do real estate, get a few duplexes, rent them out, get yeah. another house, rent that out, get my own house and maybe rent that out, you know? Have like two or three houses in real estate that I can kind of depend on to give me my payroll every single month yeah. while I'm still doing what I love to do. Giving you that freedom. Yeah, yes, giving me that know. freedom to do what I want to do. Maybe I do short films. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe I go into random projects with little people, you know, or like just do random stuff. Mm-hmm. But I started going into more of this WWE stuff. I see all these like 60-year-old camera guys still in the business. And I see them work and I see them do all these things. I'm like, damn, I kinda kinda wanna do that. Yeah, I wanna I wanted to be WWE camera guy. But then I look at other things and I kinda wanna do everything. I wanna yeah. be WWE camera. I wanna do fucking FIFA Sports camera. I wanna do like different things before I hit that retirement yeah, stage, yeah. you know? And I think um, honestly, I think it's all possible because I think one thing people forget about, they don't remember how long our life really is. <sighs> like if you think about everything you've done in a year that's like just one no, I'm year fucked. logan always says i'm fucked i've seen too much too Ooh, young that's interesting like what i'm what is there to look forward to later in life that's what I, that's what oh. that question i was like what's but um oh, shit. it might oh, take me scary. A, it, might, it is it's, <laughs> it's scary as hell because yeah. who in who is in this position that has is my age and has seen and been to the place i've been to like i feel like all i want to do now is do what i love because i don't want to ch- travel at the moment yeah. maybe in five years from now i get the urge to like, actually travel while not working yeah but uh i don't know bro it's like i want to do everything still yeah that travel Why not? must be crazy bro <laughs> it's insane bro like living in pr and having to travel to the states like all the time for different projects or different states that must be crazy dude yeah. it's weird that i got used to it Dang. How do you right. keep like? Do you ever get? Do you ever get homesick? Do you ever miss home? Like, is there any times where you're just like, I want to go home, or is there times where you just really just go home just to see your family? Your house? How do you deal with? I usually come away? back for the holidays. Yeah, like, I get. I have that freedom that Logan allows me to like go back whenever I want if there's nothing on the schedule that's important. Mm-hmm. So I usually go back for the holidays. But if I don't, I'm back here in LA like every three months, every mm-hmm. two months, you know, and. At the beginning of the first two years, I was coming back a lot. And this last year, I haven't been back a lot. I've been yeah. back like two or three times this whole year. And it gets to me when it goes over like three or four months when we are in PR not doing anything. Yeah. Like this last uh, fight camp that we're in, we we're just in Puerto Rico for two months not doing anything. And kind of got to me where you're sitting down and you're just thinking like, damn, I, I miss my friends. I yeah. miss my family. I want to go back and stuff. But I don't get to reflect on that. A lot because I'm always like it's like we said yeah, I'm always on the go I'm always moving we're from here we go back to PR for two days we go back to another event go back for three days another event we're just yeah. going and going and going so when I do get that time to reflect it's usually like three or four months in where mm-hmm. I, where that homesick kind of comes to me yeah, but true. then I come back and I'm here I see my friends I see my whole family I'm here for like a week or two and I get hungrier again oh, you wanna I want to leave I don't want I don't see. I don't feel like there's anything for me here right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm back. I get that recharge of like seeing my friends, seeing my family, going out with everyone. But then I just want to get back out there, bro. I want to yeah, get back yeah. out there and work. And it usually usually is like that. I go back two or three months, four months. I reflect on like, damn, I miss, I miss yeah, my mom. I miss, I miss my yeah. friends, you know? Like, so I get like, back. Get back. But yeah, when I do come back, I just want to, it kind of shows like how hungry and how much I really do love this that I yeah. just want to get back into work. I, I hate staying still. No, that's really good. I think that that's definitely, and I feel like, especially in Logan Paul's environment, and I feel like Logan Paul's the same way, where he just mm-hmm. looking like just grinding, and grinding. And I think that's why you guys are just a great. We, yeah, he, we want. He just wants to keep fucking yeah. going every single time. And this time that I came here, I noticed on the schedule we didn't have anything planned for the whole month. So I said, "Hey, bro, I'm I'm gonna leave for these next three weeks if we're not having anything planned." He's like, yeah, that's cool. Like he probably needs to rest too. He yeah. needs to chill out. He needs to be by himself, which is with his fiance and just. Mm-hmm hang out be himself like i live with him bro yeah so like he sees me every day so like yeah it's like we're free and we're resting but it's still work environment work yeah. friend environment you know mm-hmm. so I, I i tell him when we don't have anything on the schedule like i'm, I'm gonna go back and and rest and see my family and whenever that trip that new trip comes up that usually like out of the nowhere like this friday he's coming out on smackdown Sick. I was supposed to stay here for another week and a half, but randomly I see that Logan is going to come out on SmackDown, so I'm going to have to go to New York and do that. 
And then it doesn't make sense for me to come back to LA, so I'm gonna have to stay in PR, you yeah. know, go back to PR and then just do like a few more events here in December. But yeah. most of the time it's just, if there's no events, I'm resting, just rest, bro. And go back to LA or just rest in Puerto Rico. And that's so when good. you're traveling and you're in PR, when you come back home, don't, do you just love the fact that you get to like just have authentic Mexican food again? Bro. Right? <laughs> you just grow the fuck out on Mexican food? Well, the first thing I eat here is fucking birria tacos, yeah, bro. That's oh, yeah. oh, yeah, you posted it. Yeah, Every yeah, single yeah, time yeah, I come, yeah. birria tacos. And I think this week I've gone like four different times and like really? the whole week, five bro, different times. There's a spot literally right here. That's where we go, bro, after I, the film. Every morning, bro. You guys go there? Yeah. Yeah, after we It's film. fire. But yeah, me fucking birria. There's no, there's no birria in Puerto Rico. There's no ceviche, aguachiles in Puerto Rico. I, I like, saw you. You made ceviche for Logan. I, I make it. I had to make it myself. Yeah. And because I make it, I want Logan and to try it. So he's always trying enchiladas. Uh, <laughs> chila, I make chilaquiles. He tries that shit. Aguachiles verdes. Aguachiles uh, rojos. Yeah. What's been his favorite uh, dish that you've Bro, cooked, him and Nina love aguachiles. Yeah. Bro, they, <laughs> yes. Nina, t- okay, we have this like tradition that every single Saturday for fight night, I make aguachiles. Oh, so every man. single Saturday, it's like, aguachiles, aguachiles, aguachiles. <laughs> So like usually every Saturday over there I make our chiles for them and they love it. Oh, that's that's sick. Can you eat step up the day before a fight? Uh, like fight Saturdays. Oh, okay, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Friday, usually okay. Saturdays are like fight nights for like UFC or like random boxing events. And I you know, it. I think it's it just the, the work you're doing with Logan that's amazing. But also, I think something you're bringing in that you're helping grow is really the Mexican space in the social media world yeah. mm-hmm. because uh, this is another reason why I wanted to do this. Like mm-hmm. some people know me behind mm-hmm. the scenes. But, like, not a lot of people know that a fucking full-blooded Mexican is behind the scenes of Logan Paul's stuff, you know? Exactly. And that's, bro, I, I'm, I'm pretty Fuck sure you're bro. the one that taught him the, the Peso Pluma dance. The one that I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit, that was, that was It you. was on an Apple TV documentary. They were filming the whole WrestleMania weekend, and they kind of gave me props because I always come tell them come up with ideas and pitch them stuff. And I told him, like, hey, bro, I think you should do this dance. Do it right on top of here with the Prime bottle. And it's for sure going to get views. Like, for sure. 10 yeah. million views two days later. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, that's, like, one of the t- so many times where I've been right in his eyes with the yeah. ideas that I bring to him. So every single idea I bring to him or every pitch that I bring to him, he trusts me wholeheartedly yeah, every so. single time. No, that's great. You know? Yeah. I, like how you said, that's, that's such a beautiful thing to say, like, like basically Logan's right hand man is a Mexican American exactly. dude that and used to work at Subway. Exactly. And that's uh give me chills. That's just Ex- fucking, exactly, bro. Well. Let's yeah. clap it up for <laughs> Kevin right here, bro. Let's go, yeah, bro. Huge, Bringing bro. the that's culture yeah. to the mainstream, bro. That's the best part. Exactly. You guys uh like first that was uh you guys were Yeah, I, right I right mean there. I facilitated that collab because I was uh I was kind of friends with their videographer Osvaldo for a while. Mm-hmm. We were kinda of, like going back and forth on like each other's stories and stuff, but like we never kind of found the time to like actually collab and do stuff because i feel like the dichotomy of logan and fuerza regida doing a video together is crazy like no one expects that to happen you know so we were kind of in talks for a little while and it it was like a one or two days that they were going to be in puerto rico and we kind of just set everything up logan had no idea who they were they kind of heard his music here and there but like i had to come in and pitch he trusts me so i come in like hey this is the band this is how they do hella videos. They're all, they're kind of like our group. Like we just like doing shit on the fly. Mm. They're exactly like how we work. And I feel like you guys would be amazing together. And if people see you, a video of you two guys together, it'll just Insane. bring, Crazy. it's good for both of us. Help yeah, me yeah. help you. It'll help him. It'll help us. It'll help prime. It'll help Logan. Mm. So like, I don't know if you want to do this. We're, we have a flight in four uh, at four. They want to come at 12. We're, we'll slap this out in two hours. I invite them to the gym and we fucking did it quick. They did yeah. a music video with him in it. We did a few clips with our stuff in it. Uh, some of my ideas. Prime is always in it. Prime is going to get hell exposure for the Mexican audience. It's mm-hmm. like the pitch that goes to it. And he trusted me wholeheartedly. And they came. We, everything went smooth. He Even during it, he's like, bro, like, good shit. Like, yeah. this is crazy. Like, we're, I never thought I'd collab with them, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, like, bringing those two worlds together that would never happen otherwise is That's, cool to do, you know? Oh, yeah. for sure. I think, yeah, um, growing up, I always, I feel like we always lacked that, that Mexican representation. Mm-hmm. So now that you're being put in positions where you can do it and making it and making younger kids see that like for Sarajida is something mainstream, something, this type of music, something mainstream, this type of dance, this type of culture is mainstream is incredibly important. So, um, you know, my hats off to you thank for you, just bro. putting that to together. You, thank yeah, you, all thank your accomplishments, bro. All yeah. your projects, bro. Congratulations thank to like you, everything, bro. bro. But like I, I, like I said, I, I want people to know that. I want yeah, people yeah. to know that someone like me that came 
from a little ass town in LA that was his first job was in Subway was able to yeah. be the right hand man of one of the biggest influencer superstars in the world yeah. right now you know yeah. and I was able to do it because I knew I belonged somewhere where I wanted to do it and because my mindset allowed me to like if mm -hmm. you really want to do something like you got to really attack that shit with no no expectations and no Nothing like that's gonna hold no no doubt. Nothing that's gonna hold you back from what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. No fear and no no fear. Like even if you fuck up four times, that fifth time might be your break. You know, yeah, yeah. you just gotta keep going, keep believing in yourself, and have that mindset of always like just going after what you really want to do, bro. That's great. What yeah, would be like an advice you'll give to your younger self, like uh, from like from now on to like maybe your yourself like maybe just when you're like and you when you're in that spot where you're like I don't know what the fuck I, I know I want to do something. But I don't know what it is. What's the advice you'll give to him now? To my younger self or yeah. to younger people? To your younger self. Wow. Uh, I feel like I, uh, my younger self was so hungry that I'm glad that he did what he did to get to the places where he is. Mm -hmm. But just, to, just kind of derailing from that, one of... Um, what a, one, a, one piece of advice that I would give myself now and my, myself that has been living through this for the past three years was like really look back and, and realize what you're doing and soak it all in, bro. Because days happen, events happen like nothing, and you don't get to really soak it in while you're living it in the moment. Yeah. You know, you get to look at it with pictures sometimes or yeah. like videos, but like leaving it, living it in the moment and actually being present in the moment while doing these big things is like the, one of the most important things, yeah. you know? How, like how, you. how important do you think uh, networking is to you? Like in meeting the people you know in these events and how do you... That's another piece of advice I'd give me because these past three years I kind of was shelled up and not, really? I've been in front of the most, the craziest people and the craziest mm -hmm. connections that I've yeah. ever, never thought I'd be in, but I never took the opportunity and the advantage that I had right in front of me. You know, these past two years I've been put in the craziest dinners, the craziest situations, meeting the cr most craziest people. But I, because of the job I'm in and the little shelled mindset that I have, I didn't attack those opportunities full, full head, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, if you do, have, if you are blessed enough to be in those situations, those opportunities, you have to just take advantage of those opportunities because yeah. some of those opportunities never come for some people exactly like I, never i saw this uh uh the podcast with kevin hart and joe rogan he said when he met jeff bezos for the first time so he was like in the room with jeff bezos and he told his friend he's like hey bro that's jeff bezos i'm gonna go talk to him and then um his kevin hart's friend was like bro like no don't make a fool you're gonna make a fool out of yourself don't go do that and he's like bro that's fucking jeff bezos like if i don't have anything to say i'm at least say what's up let him see my mm -hmm. face and uh, yeah, he didn't say that. And that's exactly what he did. He was like, I don't have anything to offer right now. But I was like, I want to say, I want to go introduce myself. I want to say, what's up? Just take those chances. And I bet that worked out for him. Yeah, show face. Show face. Yeah, showing face is extremely important. But um, so being in these events and all these networking stuff. and Networking is, going back to that, my bad, yeah. is extremely important, bro. Yeah. Extremely important. You always want to be friends and be cool with the people that you never know are going to give you an opportunity in the future. You know, you always want to be friendly and connect with even the most random people. You were telling me earlier that you would drink prime at the gym, which yeah. made you talk to random people at the gym. No, yeah. And I'm, not like, even, bro, I'm not even like, I don't even want to be like, Oh, this is I'm promoting prime. Or like dead ass. Yeah, he drinks prime, yeah. yeah. Dead ass. Like I, I do drink prime. And I, I, I've noticed first time I had prime at the gym, I, it made me like, I felt like it got me a little bit more dancing because I was a little bit more dancey. I was like saying what's up to people. He's doing by He's chopper. Not working out. He's by not chopper. Working yeah. He's just dancing and shit. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah, man? exactly. And that's made me like kind of open up to people and be like, hey, what's up? What's, what's good? And then But it's like, good because you never know who you run into, bro. You mm -hmm. never know that the next person you run into or the next person you're sitting next to, like some random WWE event, is a sl the owner of Slim Jim type shit. Right. Or like yeah. someone at the gym that you go to is the owner of a production that's needing a position for some shit you know you yeah, just yeah. never know you yeah. always want to be friendly to everyone around you even though it doesn't bring an opportunity right there and then yeah, networking be friends be cool with everyone do not be stuck up do not think that you're the shit because yeah. of any position that you're in but like just be cool with everyone be humble and be chill yeah. have you met those types of fake people in this industry everywhere bro yeah people so many people think that they're hot shit yeah and one thing I realized and being seeing stuff and being in these different places is that 
there's so many levels to this shit. Like the people that really think that do this shit and they have money are like barely scraping the entrance of like the levels they could that's why they could get into. You know? <laughs> that's, that's a crazy <laughs> diss. <laughs> no, that so is like, insane. That is so insane. like yeah, you could think you got money and you got all this fucking bling bling or whatever the fuck, but like bro, it's not no one's terrible. No, bro. Like and, yeah. and because of that, I'm I was able to stay humble. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. bro, none of this shit matters, bro. Even the highest of the highest billionaire is in the same positions that we are just with the shitload of money you know yeah. mm -hmm. like you said like i think you posted it you, you put like we all live the same lives or something like Bro, that no yeah but i meant that with like our experiences it's just funny how you you think you've had like a interesting or like very different life than others but then you've done the same shit like as everyone else like i was i did you know, i had the idea called you <laughs> When you called me, I was like, bro, we're living the same life, I dog. I was like, I thought I was different, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dog? It's like, you're not special. It's like, bro, I'm not special. <laughs> like, I just noticed, none of us are special in that type of way. Like, because you ever, like, no, you ever notice how, like, you see videos, you're like, bro, you you lived that experience too? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, did, yeah. did I not have one single, like, different experience? Like, when I thought I was, I was a up? snowflake. I thought I was different. <laughs> you know, what the fuck? So, like, like, the reason why I say that is because I saw this video... Or it's like, you know how when it's super cold, right? When and you shot? go to the bathroom yeah. and you come back and you lay down and you put the covers on you and you like do a little giggle and you shiver. Oh, yeah. It's the best. Bro, when I saw that, I was like, there's no fucking way that everyone does this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, you know how you like, you, you go in, you put on the cover, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm like, dude, the fact, and I saw the amount of likes that I was like, dog, there's no. Yeah, I was so like, bro, like, <laughs> you do that? Bro, there's so many little things that guys do that every single fucking guy does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the one when you got your ass beat by your parents. What did you do? I'm fucking you like, <gasps> I'm fucking running away. That shit don't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear I'm gonna beat him up when I grow up. No, no, like all this shit, dude. You're like, and then you see that, like someone posted like a funny video about it. You're like, dude, like, did I not have any fucking special experiences, dude? <laughs> and you, the, the yelling. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, can you do it? <laughs> Oh, they don't, yeah. I don't, they don't love me. Yeah. I fucking hate this. I hate this house. Like, dude, like, oh my God. You're in your restroom in your little ass room. <laughs> I remember one time I was going through that and I told my parents I was running away. And like, and like, I ran. <laughs> like I ran away and I just. They didn't say anything. You're they, like, fuck, they don't want me back. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't make a thing about it. I was like, yeah. like y'all not going to get me? Like, what the fuck? No, they knew you were coming back. Multiple yeah. experiences, bro, where I, I mean, I can go on and on and then people are going to be like, dude, I have to live too. I'm just like. Dude, like that's crazy. Everyone's the same, bro. It's yeah. like if we're like programmed to have the same life. <laughs> like at that some point, you're like humans, bro. Humans, yeah. humans, so dude. Yeah, something that you think you could probably like comment right now. Something you think that no one's ever like happened Someone's to them. Done it. So done it. there's gonna be like a hundred thousand people <laughs> have the same experience. I'll challenge you with yeah, that. I'll, I'll comment you. something. I'm gonna I'm comment something and see who's done it. <laughs> I'm gonna see. <laughs> you expose yourself I'm just to something weird, totally <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, bro. Honestly, nah, not that one, not that one. You ever like put your dick in a shoe? What? 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 Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. A shoe? I, I smell my shoes. That is me? No, what kind of shoe? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait. The, the ones that like wrap uh, around your ankles. You're like an Air Force? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, the ones that wrap around your ankles. <laughs> Those? But uh, actually, that's. Uh, we kind of hit. We were like uh, kind of scratching the surface of a simulation. And, no, we uh, are in a simulation. We are. Yeah, we're in a that's my point. That whole thing, it feels like we're just in a simulation, bro. Yeah. We're all Sims. Have you seen uh, The Trip to Infinity? Trip to nah. Infinity on Netflix. Ooh, you guys, no. ooh. Documentary? Yeah. Okay, no. no, no. It's basically ex explaining what infinity is in mathematical terms and ooh. what is possible. And it's fucking crazy, bro. It's fucking crazy. That documentary in itself made me rethink our our life existence, bro. We it's ain't shit. shit. Yeah, yeah. We are not shit, bro. You think yeah, there's like you think there's other big players like have you seen that one i think simpsons does it where it's like the world and it zooms out and then it's like aliens playing marbles it could be like some shit like that bro aliens are real you, oh, you, oh, <laughs> i don't want you to brought it up okay so any so <laughs> you can't the I, 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 I think i think so, i think i agree too i agree too i mean what you think there's you think we're the only one? Yeah, it's so, like bro? nah. Yeah, there's no possible. way. One of the best quotes, I forgot who said it, but it was Kevin amazing. did. Aliens are real. <laughs> <laughs> Quoted alien. Kevin said it. Aliens are real. Yeah. 2023. Think, no, but I think, one, I think. I think. There's someone said uh, it was scientists that said one of the scariest things in life is um, well, he said either we there is other life form or we're all alone, and both of those are very scary. Yeah, like uh, it, that's true. Like it's scary that we either we are just the only 
we're like not life alone. Forms. We're not alone. No, I know, but that or we're <laughs> not, and that's also scary. Both See, are just scary. He says fun. that because he's seen the footage. Uh, what footage? He's seen the uh, footage. Uh, like the ones that go on on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like the Navy one that they have like an infrared camera and they see like a fucking. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. I think that was the AI or some shit. You think so? <laughs> nah, hell no. <laughs> there's a um, uh, there's this this thing that Logan Paul mentioned a while ago that was blowing up. Yeah. That he's got some footage. Logan mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he did. No, nah, it wasn't him. He doesn't I have think, some footage. That's like. I think someone on Joe Rogan meant that worked with us yeah okay the podcast mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like someone said that he someone said that it. he said that he did someone said and, that he, and yeah. logan confirmed it so like i guess logan did say <laughs> okay, but man. uh what did he, what did he say did you guys do your research on so that? okay <laughs> he I'm said like, yeah. we actually have the footage we'll put, we'll put it up you don't have the footage you do he's got it <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's in his Snapchat memories. So, so He's not, like, check it out, bro. <laughs> so not even getting into it, but like, how, how do you feel sometimes, like knowing you have like all of these like these secrets that everybody wants secrets. to know? They're not as crazy as you guys think. Like, they're it's it's cool footage, but it's I think I could say this because I think it's been out, but it's basically footage from a couple that recorded through a VHS camera in 1995. I think I saw it on Twitter. 1995. This this couple recorded footage on their VHS camera that passing through that city they give they gave the tape to this old man that lived in a random trailer and that man didn't want that footage to be seen anywhere he's the only one that had it the only one that had this footage and me and logan found out about that so we wanted to go there go in the middle of nowhere and try to buy this footage off of him yeah and he wasn't buying it he's like i don't want to sell this i don't want to sell this so I, what did I, what did they say? That so the Lo- farmer did, no longer is alive. How did Logan? And you guys have the footage. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the farmer either, disappeared. Basically. I don't want to misquote. He did either. die though. Oh, he did. I think farmer. he died, bro. Oh, shit. Crazy. But uh, yeah. like a year ago, we did this like three years ago. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. But uh, <laughs> conspiracy. What did you hear? How did Logan get the footage uh, from your guys' eyes? From he, what I remember, it was that that exact same thing that he went to go buy it from someone, but he didn't want to. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was, and that's why I thought it was. He secretly okay, this recorded is it. This is my conspiracy. <laughs> Kevin went in like this. Nah, yeah. this <laughs> my conspiracy. <laughs> you don't need to answer this, but it's my conspiracy. This is what I think. I think you guys, both of you guys, you guys went to go do that. And uh, and we FBI raided us. Something, some, <laughs> something like that. Bah, bah, bah. So this is my conspiracy. I've always thought about this. I was like, that story, which you said is true. You went to go meet this guy and he didn't want to buy middle it. Middle of nowhere, bro. Middle he lives nowhere. in the trailer. No service. Like Curse the Cowardly Dog style? Like no. Of yeah, we're, we're scared, bro. We yeah. meet this guy in the parking lot. It's going to take us to his thing because he doesn't want his location to be this close. Yeah, it's crazy. Place. Yeah, I think, I forgot if it, if it was, but I think someone mentioned something about having a pan with the camera. And oh, it was in his pocket. Yeah. yeah. But I think it was you recording. I think you're the behind the scenes guy, and I think you recorded the. I think Logan Paul is like, hey, bro, record this. I'm gonna talk to this guy, but you. I didn't go in to talk it. to him. He no? went by himself inside the trailer. I didn't uh, go in. I always thought it was you that Loki recorded. But maybe, it. maybe he was mic'd up, or maybe he was mm-hmm. wearing a button camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like he blinked Perhaps. twice into the camera. He blinked he, maybe, twice. maybe he has a, a button that's fake in his shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which he is like. Oh, let me see the footage. Yeah, and then it's you just. You want to sell it? Let me see the footage. Yeah, <laughs> that's the crazy part. He's like, he's like really big too. He's like, like big whole chest. Hey, did it like he had boobs or something? Exactly. Was like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he went in there. He was talking to the guy, and I was just on the outside, kind of watching the perimeter. Not wa- <laughs> like listening in. I mean, no one was around, bro. Fucking oh, tumble leaf. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he was like this. <laughs> You're just there like mm-hmm. yeah. I had the headphones on I was just kind of listening But uh, I didn't know What was going on in there And then He comes out We leave And we see the footage after And he, even him His reaction coming out I was like Oh what the fuck was this Really This is Every time you watch A VHS tape It gets degraded over time yeah. Every single time you watch it It gets oh. degraded And it's been since 1995 So it's a little bit glitchy If he even did get anything it would be a little bit glitchy because this VHS footage has been it's been, it's been written over for a while. Anyway. But Damn. he came out and he wasn't as surprised as I thought he was gonna be because mm. this footage is, is cra- it is it is fucking crazy. But it's not as crazy. It's not fucking. World, saying it's not up. worldwide news. It's yeah. not, and it's, yeah. it's just like a crazy footage that was in 1995. That's for sure 
unaltered. Yeah. I really, bro, I swear, I really thought Logan Paul was going to be the one to reveal aliens to the world. Like, I'm not even lying. So, we're, we want to, we have a whole documentary of what happened, that whole thing. Oh, that's sick. Like, we, we document everything. We got footage of every single thing that happened. We have that doc ready, but we don't think the footage is exciting enough to make a dent in the alien space. Mm -hmm. So, what we want to do is wait for something to come out later that kind of resembles what we have to kind of pinpoint two different types of footages that look the same. So yeah, Logan yeah. Paul will show the world aliens are real. If, before GTA 6, isn't that, <laughs> isn't that insane? Six. Like, wow. CM Punk returns before GTA oh, 6 comes out, dude. What the fuck, bro? CM Punk don't want the US champ, though. I'm just oh. saying. Um, nah, I don't think he, he wants to go bigger, bro. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants I think to, he wants to go to the, you know, that, that world heavy title, maybe? Yeah. Nah, I think he's going after Roman Reigns, bro. He yeah, I heard, I heard. I think that's, that's. I, I've been looking at the comments. I think that's going to be the one. I think Everyone thinks it's going to be Seth Rollins. Next, it's next lens yeah, for yeah. sure because I feel like they have a little bit of an real animosity. Behind yeah, him. I saw that when Sam Punk first came off out. And shit. Yeah. I was like, was that real? And I saw people were saying like, yeah, that was real. Knowing Seth, that I, that that looked real. Yeah, because <laughs> you had him on. You, had, you guys had him on um, impulsive. Yeah, but and, Logan yeah. also had a match with him. Yeah, he did. At, um, which he was able to work with him. And what pay per view was that again? Uh, WrestleMania. What? Yeah, last year, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Versus Seth, that's right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's when Case I got fucking with the bottle. Oh, with the bottle. <laughs> with the yeah. bottle. It's the same match. I forgot, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. That was funny, dude. But uh, fuck. Where were we? So yeah, we're not. Aliens. We're not alone. In oh, yeah, yeah, we're not alone. Hell no, we're not. I I really believe that somewhere in another galaxy, Star Wars type of shit is pew, real. Pew, oh, like they're fighting like. Pew, 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 I mean, who pew, knows, pew, pew, pew. bro? Most likely to be. That'd be crazy. I think, I think there's a civilization that's like fifty thousand years above us, hundred thousand, a whole century fucking yeah, in I mean, front of us. I feel like there's humans that are not in this world that like left. Bro, talk about the ocean though. Yeah, exactly. The like fuck? I feel like aliens came Octopus. from there. Octopi. Big ass krakens that have their legs. Do you see that one? What the hell, bro? Yeah, have you seen that? Oh, that uh, long ass squid. Remember that video I showed you yeah, guys? Yeah, it's real too. Yeah, I'm, they I'm, live I'm, all the way at the bottom. Like, dude. we're worried about outside of the earth. But what about <laughs> inside? Like, we've we discovered 5% of the and ocean. And you know what's crazy no, about those wild. squids? They they um um barely, like, I found out about like five, six, seven years ago, I forgot. Um, Those are, they've only found babies. Those are all just little, like, babies. <laughs> Yeah, those those squids. Those squids. Yeah, yeah, the one with the Meg? long ass arms. Meg, Meg, yeah. uh, like the under under the storm, there's yeah. like bigger creatures. The, like yeah. who knows? Yeah, Maybe bro. Like they still haven't found a, a full adult. <sighs> you know what's my? You know how do they know the age? <laughs> huh? How do they know how old they are? They ask them. Yeah, they. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> like, like uh, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I have this theory uh, with like Bigfoot because you know how Is Bigfoot real, Kevin. You guys, you guys doing a finding Bigfoot? There's people with some big ass feet, but I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know Bigfoot. But I have this, uh, <laughs> I have this theory. You know how, like in the ocean, like octopuses, and there's all their octopi. There's all, and there's all their fishes that like blend into their environment. It's more fish in the sea. Deep, deep yeah. down. Yeah. Who is to oh, say okay, that okay. those aren't? There aren't mammals living like that either. Like, what if Bigfoot is also has that power mm, to, to camouflage like change? the things? Yeah. Or like a chameleon, basically. Yeah, chameleon stuff. Like who says I saw this one video where supposedly these But why don't they want to be seen? Because they have big ass feet. Yeah, I don't think they're like because those type of animals hide because they're predators. predators. Mm -hmm. I don't think any predators are going after Bigfoot. Yeah, no one's gonna wanna fuck with Us. Why the fuck why does he not want to be seen? Wait, Us? We, we, we were, bro, what imagine, animal would kill imagine Bigfoot. If, yeah. Imagine if Bigfoot comes out, right? And then it's like CIA would just be like, boop. Yeah, they know about CIA. Well, yeah. they proved that those type of animals they did exist them? long ago. Yeah. Giants but the and shit? question yeah. is, if it's still alive today, that's hmm. like the debate. Basically. Maybe like that one or two that's like barely surviving somehow. Yeah, but like, I mean, there. who knows, bro? Yeah, there's so many things, and the world's so big. I mean, you've been all over the world. Like you, you <laughs> like, oh shit, like. There's so many things I see here. Like, I, like I, you went to Iceland? Was it? Was Iceland, that one of the bro. 99 originals? Yeah, that was crazy. Well, Iceland, that was going to be one of my questions for you. Like you, you know, you being a Mexican and everything, going all around the world. How, like, when I have, like, when you talk to people, like, when you tell them all, like, do you tell them you're Mexican and everything? Like, how was the reaction to, like, like, is there, like, like, how, how, how is that basically meeting uh, like new cultures and then showing your culture to them? Basically, overseas, they fucking love us. They bro. fuck with yeah. it. They love us, like. When I get into conversations with like people in Spain or like people in Iceland or like people in Australia, and then like the first thing I say because of how I look mm. is I'm Mexican, you know, and the reaction is, oh shit, you're Mexican. Like oh, they shit. love us, bro. Yeah, On the sick. other side of the world, they love us. But 
I don't see that many Mexicans on the other side. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. that small, small percentage. I remember the last time I saw someone was in Denmark. Like I was coming out of a hotel and he was like the, like the, the chairman taxi guy or whatever. And I saw him I'm like, bro, I know you fucking. Yeah, Mexican. you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I Mexicano, like, yeah, 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 in fucking Denmark, bro, yeah, Copenhagen, crazy. bro. Wow. Fuck. So like, it's rare to see. Latinos and Mexicans and the other side of the world, yeah. but I hope that starts to change real, For sure. real soon. You know, you know it's crazy. Uh, you saying that like Mexicans are so loved, like especially Spain. in Spain. Yeah, like, I've heard different. Yeah, I've heard differently, and it's just no, like sp I mean the Spaniards that I've met. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know if they're being fake or not, but yeah. they love. They're so enthusiastic about that's so uh, cool. people from Mexico. They're like, yeah. oh, I, I love your. I love how yeah. it is. I love the. I love the city. I mm. love specific cities they name and they just love it they love it that's cool yeah i feel that, that's I, dope to hear though mm -hmm. yeah that because, is dope to hear because i feel like in mexican culture there's a lot of fear-based things where it's like you don't want to do something because someone gets fear in your head be like oh why are you gonna go like they don't like you like mm. type of shit like that so when you hear someone who went to spain nah, you be like, bro, oh, they fuck I with guess you hear Europe, those experiences. They're, yeah. they're like mexicans more than americans bro even that, americans one, yeah. going overseas is like oh american bro Ew. yeah what's up <laughs> yeah yeah, I feel. I mean, yeah, like they didn't. They didn't I could see why, like, because I feel like we're like there's a different USA customs. has just USA? had this this I don't know, like just like cocky don't, persona, yeah, just, yeah. We're like we feel like we're like U.S. people from like Americans feel like we're like the big dogs, mm -hmm. but like I feel like when you have like that Mexican in you, you're like not really. Like yeah, we're all like, kind of similar, exactly. you know? Exactly. Yeah. I guess it's the culture. We're just naturally humble, and they feel that right away. Yeah, and and, and it's true, like the yeah. culture because like Mexican culture and every other culture, like other than in, in the these in the states, is like it's like a community. Mm -hmm. And in the, the states, it's more like you, you, you. It's yeah, like singularities, exactly, exactly. And that's why they kind of fuck with us because like. I feel like even you, like you're eating at a restaurant and like a lady, if she drops something or something, you're probably gonna even try to help her, mm -hmm. right? And like Americans are like, oh, it's yeah, her yeah. job. So it's some, like, some, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> some, 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 some. No, but also I think the dopest thing is because you guys share a common interest. Like when you go to Europe and all these other countries is the biggest sport in the world, football, soccer. 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 Yeah, so like they when they know you're Mexican, like, oh, yeah, this, he yeah. most most likely loves soccer, yeah, you know? Yeah. So even like, at the World Cup, I was... Rocking you're wearing, my Mexican jersey, yeah. bro. And I, everywhere I went, oh, man, he got him, he got him. I love that shit. I heard no matter where the World Cup is, Mexicans always have the biggest fan base. Oh, it's always way. Mexicans, the oh, English, and then if Argentina. the Irish are there, the, I heard Irish fans Argentina. are really Argentina, dope. Argentina, for sure. Argentina, Argentina fans, Brazil. Yeah. It's crazy. Brazil, yeah. Sheesh. What country's got the baddest women? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> From your experience in Qatar, when you saw the fans out there, what you, what general, you were like, you know what? Damn. What was the best jersey you saw? <laughs> what was the yeah, best jersey, best. bro? <laughs> Was the best jersey. I mean, it's only people with money that I guess are gonna go to mm, guitar, yeah. like yeah, people yeah. that have saved their lives. Yeah. Yeah. I don't fucking know, but uh, best, best jersey. The best jersey. Put him in the hot seat. The best crop top jersey. <laughs> the, the alien, the alien one didn't even bother him, but this one's like. Nah. <laughs> Like, or about when you travel to different countries. Once you were like, you know, these are uh, Spanish like, people. Yeah, Spanish. Spanish people are are really good looking. Yeah, I've yeah. heard Scandinavian is supposedly like the rated number one. Iceland? Like Swiss, like no, like oh sorry, not well, no, like um, Swiss, Swiss, uh, um, Switzerland, Swedish, uh, Swedish people, and then Danish people, like that area, Sweden, Denmark, like I guess in that area is rated number one when you like, I guess like when you, when you like beauty standards and the yeah, way. beauty standards mm -hmm. and all that stuff, yeah. Oh, okay, but I don't know like what your take is on that. Uh, <laughs> say Latinos, bro. That's like I mean, it's always gonna be Latinos, <laughs> bro. Latinos. Always, bro. Always like, be Latinos. I, I, I agree. <laughs> I feel like I've Shout seen. I've seen. I've seen a, I've seen a lot, and I've you know yeah. been able to yeah, experience yeah. how different type of ethnicities are. And, what do you mean by experience? Uh, <laughs> okay. Meet certain yeah. people, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But You're like, it's, it's always dude. it's always <laughs> Latinas that are gonna be on top of the world, bro. Yeah, you and know? on top of you. Uh, who knows? So, so do you guys eat tamales for Christmas? Over there? Me? No, like over oh. there. Because you, you, you do you spend like Christmas time over there a little I, bit? In no, I usually come back. Oh, you come back? I always yeah. come back. Oh, okay. uh, I, yeah. the, the biggest major like holiday that I spent overseas was I think Thanksgiving in... Um, Thanksgiving in... Fuck. In Norway. Damn. That's sick. I think. Or something like that. I think yeah. it was Norway, but I spent Thanksgiving there. You know, just like a random little dinner with... Actually, it was me, Logan, and this guy named Mike Horn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys ever heard about Mike Horn. Bro, he is the most... He is a... He is a... What do you call it? He does like expeditions and stuff. He's like a traveler. He does oh, different shit. stuff. Like he, for the mountains and stuff? 
yeah, he like climbs mountains. He he circumnavigated the globe. Damn. He at some point he had to cut off his fingers because of his he had frostbite. That's crazy. With a wire, like the craziest <sighs> stories this man has ever done. And that night we all went to dinner. He invited us to his house. In his own house, he has a cave that's giving him Evian water daily from the mountain. What? Like Damn. this guy Mike Horn is Most insane. Man in the world. Insane. Like I'm. So intrigued that no one has done any stories on him or like any big documentaries on Let's this guy. Let's get him on the pod. Hey, Mike Corn, hit us up. He's he's <laughs> he's insane, bro. Yeah. He's insane. But like, I had Thanksgiving with him. And that's kind of only the real big holiday that I've kind of done while being away from home. Mm. And he's American, just living out there. Or you Mike Corn? Yeah. Mike Corn. He's, I think he's French or something mm. like that. But he lives uh, near Geneva, which is across from I that's think where I am. Oh, I wasn't. I was in Switzerland. I okay. was in Switzerland, not Norway. Damn. Across, yeah, Geneva. I'm bad at geography, so it, either hey, way to hey, me, bro. it all seemed like hey, the same thing. You know what helps? Soccer. Soccer. Yep. Come okay. on, bro. Yeah. Champions League, the work, <laughs> all that shit helps, bro. Yeah, Come it on, really does. Um, it does. It's crazy though. What's uh actually going going back to the holiday dish thing? Do you um <laughs> what Aaron does? Aaron <laughs> likes to have uh eggs in his tamales the next morning. <laughs> In. Oh, well, with that, his on the side. side? Yeah, yeah, on the side. Even that is like, what the fuck? Are you yeah, serious? You're you're very have... common, bro. But you know what? And it's, it's not even a region thing, bro. People just do I've it. Never, like, you're the first person. Nah. No, you eat tamales for you, breakfast yeah, or that's eggs. A, no, that's why I yeah, said, like, it's not so separate. Right? You know, you make tamales for <laughs> Christmas, right? The next morning when you have a lot of leftover, because you know you're going to have some leftovers. Then you're going to eat three tamales. Yeah. No, no, Right on the pan, a little bit of oil, right? You you crisp them up a little bit, yeah, right? You crisp them up. That's understandable. Eggs on the side, even if you guys had frijoles, then like the Where night before. Where you from? Uh, my dad from Chihuahua and my mom from Tijuana. I, mean, I, don't know. I, I thought it was a regional thing. I don't it's think not, so. bro, you, dude. Kevin, that like, same video, dude. The comments. There is there people saying? Wait, yeah. you guys already posted? We, yeah, we talked about something like that, and it well, just, what was the re reception like? It was half and half. What? Yeah, oh, it's way more than half no, and half. Bro. <laughs> no, go to the comments. You're Do biased right now. You've been biased. Being biased. I think it just. There's just, a poll on the screen right now. There's a poll. <laughs> Hit it up. There's uh, a pool. A poll. If you eat tamales, tamales, eggs, or tamales and eggs. Yeah. Separate. Yeah. Exactly. Separate. It's like having a hot dog and a hamburger in the same sitting. Like you got to choose weird. one. You can't. You just can do that a barbecue. I, I think you could do that too. <laughs> okay. How about like a steak and a hot dog? A hot dog. Yeah. Yeah. And what? A take it. Like you have to have those. Like you can't. You don't just have a steak and a hot dog. I think just the eggs and tamales are weird as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bro, I'm telling you, it <laughs> fucking fits. I'm gonna it's a try combo, this year. Bro. I'm gonna try this year. What's that? Bro, and if you had like the charro beans, like you know, be like the tocino beans and shit, bro. That and then like, the to breakfast too, bro. Right there, all together, dude. <laughs> What's that other dish you're talking about that I had no idea what you're talking about? Remember we brought it up the other day. What dish? You like? You said we're like, oh, it's the tamales, and then you said something else, and I was like, I've never had that. Was it with beans? Huevos. No, nah, I wasn't Wevels. Wevels? Forgot. Do you have any like dishes that you eat that you think that no other people do? Or Not like, really. Or some, I guess, tapatios, weird combos. People from Guadalajara are pretty normal. We're pretty normal. <laughs> do, you mustard? do you like mustard? Yeah. Do you, have mustard. you ever put it on your pizza? Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, ketchup. Yo, turn off is Maybe. Mind. People in Mexico put <laughs> ketchup put on ketchup, pizza. Right? Sometimes. So I don't really like ketchup. I like mustard. Pizza with mustard is fire. What the that fuck? That is. How much? A like, little bit. Just... Like one nah. line or like, like a drizzle? Like, no, nah. like, like one line or like maybe I, I, I put it like on the side and then I'll just dip my pizza. I don't eat the whole thing. What like, the fuck? Yeah. I, I'm barely putting mustard on my hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. right. But that's uh, the only thing I, I like put mustard. mustard y'all little boys. Y'all little boys. Y'all <laughs> <You laughs> don't know. Y'all don't know. get it, bro. Bro, you put pizza. ranch. That's nasty. On, on a hot dog? On pizza? On pizza? Yeah, bro. Dip it after every other bite. That kind of passes because you got wings next to it. kind of Wings with milk? That's weird. I'd rather dip my fries in ranch than ketchup. Honestly, I fries and what? Yeah, yeah. Like fries and ranch other than ketchup. Yeah, I, I only like I only eat ranch with like lemon pepper wings. I do it with carrots. That's it. I don't like carrots. Ranch. Uh, yeah. no, I don't uh. like ranch. Are you are you the type to like spread your ketchup on the fries or are you the dipper? Dip. Yeah. I trust you for sure. Because <laughs> like, what if what if you, you grab pour it all on your fries, bro? Yeah, if I'm on my fries, no, uh, you get, you get to choose your portion. Yeah, that's true. I just I don't know. I, I, what if you grab a fry and there's ketchup on your finger? Yeah, you're like I'll fucking uh, like, damn sausage. Like, <laughs> he's like he's like I don't have time to dip. <laughs> <laughs> I need it ready right now. I don't like sharing. So nah, I just like uh, he's I can tell, a dude. fork with like lemon hot Cheetos uh, or I a see, fork with fries and ketchup. I see people using chopsticks to eat like hot Cheetos. 
That's stupid huh? as fuck. Right, that's not that's like culture appropriate. <laughs> that's not- <laughs> Yo, I can't even talk shit because I, I eat my sushi with the fucking fork, bro. I'm oh, not even gonna lie. I ain't going front. I ain't I'm going not gonna front. lie. In the first dinner I had with the team prior and team Logan, bro, I couldn't even grab Use a fucking chopsticks. piece of sushi, bro. Like, oh fuck. Still can't, bro. Yeah. Oh fuck, it's fine. And I at least could kinda get it now. I gotta yeah. put it in, but like a fork, though. I, I kinda dude. at least tried. I know I, I tried many times, bro. <laughs> fucking suck. I fucking suck, dude. Okay, I'm boy. like every time I try grabbing it, that shit just falls apart. Every time, I'm just like, bro, I'm just gonna fucking, yeah. Your hands. Either I'm shaking. just gonna either I'm just gonna grab it, bah, or I'm but fork, bro. You're I on a date and you're like, I know, bro. I'm like struggling for yeah, not to so fucking fall over, and then bam, the fucking seaweed falls apart. You, you don't yeah. take girls to, on sushi dates, of course. And if I have, yeah, I've done it before. Yeah, my mom sushi was, dates. That's a good sushi, date. Yeah, yeah my that's, mom. That's, oh, he has a theory. Yeah, I'm there. Well, it's not a theory. It's a it's a proven fact. Oh my bad, bro. Yeah, it's a proven bro, fact. It's, it's been like it's, it's it's a whole Google research and everything. If you go on first date to sushi, there's a seventy percent chance you're getting a second date. Why? Who said that? It's Google, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you trust everything you read online, bro. Google does. It's just real. Yeah, yeah, watch, check it out. Yeah, seventy percent. The real got and he said it. The real got like two million likes. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's it's, it's me. True. It's actually me. Like I I, I said I, I I saw one article made a TikTok about it. Now it's a thing. No, bro, my <laughs> I guess that's. I guess that's understandable. And remember, bro, yeah, you could nice be as you could be as weird as you want, but it's also the type of girl you're hanging out with. Yeah, yeah. Because what if she doesn't like sushi? Or what if she only likes going to Chick Fil A and sitting in the car? And that's a date for her. You that's know? the best. Yeah. I, I know. like the inexpensive ones. Yeah. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> My pocket loves the you. Canes ones. <laughs> canes is fire, bro. New study Shout finds that loves- sushi is the key to a second date. Who are the Who are the Who's this who by? Are they by interviewing? the interviewing? Who's it by? I don't know. I don't never. I don't even know. Esquire. Uh, Esquire. Esquire. <laughs> I've heard of them. If you're um, amateur, what politicals tend to experience thirteen percent more orgasms. Wait, at what? <laughs> but like, <laughs> what am I reading? <laughs> I like, like, Democrats are very bro, different. Two thousand sixteen election type. What What's the hell going on here? Sushi? I feel like a lot of girls don't like raw fish. No, they just they like, like raw. raw though. <laughs> or the raw fish. Um, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, my, my oh, mom my and my dad, my mom and my dad were so, like, we used to eat sushi pretty often, and they were, like, they were literally almost beat my ass because I didn't know how to use chopsticks until I learned. Sushi's and fine. my mom would be like, this is what she would tell me. She's like, imagine you take out a girl, and you know how to use chopsticks. Or you go out with your friends, you don't know how to use chopsticks. She that literally was, was like, don't be embarrassed. That she was doesn't my, know either? It's cool. Like it. <laughs> yeah. That was my mom. I remember when we used to go to Denny's all the time, I didn't know how to use a fork and a knife. And she you was like, her like, Rex? Yeah, I just like that. And she, bro, I, like she did not care. Like she'd be like lecturing me, like in the middle of a Denny's, <laughs> teaching me how to use it. And I'm like crying and shit, trying to cut up my steak. <laughs> it's a traumatized. What's your, what's your offer of sushi? Um, I love a good lobster roll. It has okay. to have a either avocado or salmon. It has to have tuna, in my opinion. Tuna, spicy tuna, spicy tuna or normal tuna. Both, they're cool. You gotta have soy sauce though. Yeah. Are you do? Spicy I'm gonna meal. really test you guys now. How do you dip it in your soy sauce? Like a ten percent, fifty percent, or oh, full shit. dip? Oh damn. That's I'm how you. I'm, I'm a not dipper. gonna lie. I ask for extra mm. spicy mayo and eel sauce on the side too. Eel sauce is crazy. It though. is crazy. Put that on pokey. Why would? But I dip my whole shit in that. Like shit. the whole so thing. Just, Torta ogada style. Torta ogada. Like, like <laughs> the bottom half. Uh-huh. It's full of fucking soy sauce, bro. Oof, I do fifty. Yeah, I, half the I thing. love that shit, bro. I do a little dip. You guys put a little bit of wasabi in the soy sauce. Oh, it makes yeah, it seen, yeah, I think that's what Aaron does. Yeah, Aaron does that little mix. Yeah, yeah bro. I learned that from a friend too. He I don't like me ginger that. though. Huh? The ginger they put on the side. Ugh. I think that I heard that's just for like to remove the taste, so you can get a different type of plate of sushi. Fuck that. Oh my God. <laughs> I just like that, that shit. What you being around the world? What's the craziest dish you've tried? Oh, tiger. That's a good one. Yeah. Tiger, huh? Yeah, tiger. Tiger soup. Craziest dish? Yeah. Like, like it tasted amazing, or it was just wild. To like eat. a wild to thing to eat. A camel's eye. What? Where was that? In Qatar. They, were, they they told Logan to do it, and Logan didn't want this. I was like, fuck it. I'll try ev- mostly everything once. Yeah. <laughs> so I fucking bit into this shit, and it kind of tastes like turkey, but like the inside had really? a little bit of pudding. And just the thought... Oh, of eating a camel's <laughs> eye it is like, like square when you, when you no but it was just like squishy and then you rode camels the next day huh it wasn't big. <laughs> 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 he's looking at you <laughs> but uh it was it wasn't bad it was just the thought of eating a camel's yeah, eye that was, uh, like, uh, like, that was like oh fuck i'm eating an eye right now yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i get it i think Ow. i posted what, a video what about like um wildest this that you tried but it was like actually very delicious you're like holy fuck this is good that was like very new to you the first time I tried 
uh, A5 Wagyu steaks. Oh, bro, you're so lucky. Mm. <sighs> like pure Japanese A5 Wagyu? Oh, my God. <sighs> Damn. Because, like, usually on these events, we do a dinner. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a good dinner. And it's usually good food. So, like, we go around all these different places. But the first time I tried A5 Wagyu, was, I've heard about it. I've heard about the, fucking like the legend people yeah. singing to these cows, massaging them, only feeding them olives and shit or like singing them a bunch of shit and i've heard this meat was the most perfect meat in the whole world and first time i tried it it was fucking like yeah. a party in my mouth bro it was yeah. crazy a5 wagyu it meat. like melted in your mouth it's huh? just like it has so much fat fat and and what is it intramuscular fat that it just yeah. melts in your mouth basically bro. the meat is marbleized with yeah, fat exactly. so like the whole thing is just like meat marbleized with fat so people describe it as like meat butter so once you take one bite, like just Crazy. melts in your mouth. You're only supposed to have a little bit because yeah. it's so rich. It just, it just stays in your mouth. What but it's heck? amazing. Like the steak is my favorite shit to eat. So yeah. like when I do have a chance to eat that, it's like the best thing ever. Damn. Always medium rare. So that's what we always, always, yes. always, always medium rare. rare. Yes, oh, he knows. Yes, know. a man of class. We see. have a friend. Oh, who we say always get his meat. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> well yeah. done. Congratulations, bro. Yeah, well done. Yeah. We're like, bro, how, like, that is a waste of a steak. If yeah, you want 100%. well done, just go get some carne asada, bro. Real, that that great. Great. Like, <laughs> even that, you gotta get the, you don't know what I'm saying, but like, yeah, <laughs> you gotta let it, like, sit a little. Yeah. <laughs> no. Bro, the, to the Tommies, bro, he cooked one whole Tommy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 I remember we had Tomahawk. Tommy. Yeah, yeah, we had like six Tommies. Shout out to Papa Changos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Tommy hooked them up with six Tomahawks, right? So we're like, oh, let's go to the pad. Let's go to someone's pad. And we went to his pad. Up. We went to his pad, right? <laughs> and like, all five steaks, bro. Medium rare, right? Delicious, fucking juicy. Has as always, be. right? Well done. It's his, bro. He stupid. saved one for himself where it was like fucking burnt. It's fucking jerky. Like, what the fuck? It could be yeah, charred up from the outside, but like, yeah. yeah inside, it was charred up everywhere. everywhere. It was brown inside, dude. <laughs> it was, gr no, sorry, not brown. Gray. Yeah. It was gray as fuck. Uh, We're like, that's when it's the most chewy. It's like, yeah, it's dude. like the color gray that you think it's been there for like three days. That's the shit that your stomach doesn't even digest. Yeah, uh, like Wahoo Shino's like, you like your gum? Yeah, you like right? your meat flavored gum there, bud? <laughs> no, nah, but steak is my most favorite dish. One of the other mm -hmm. things is uh, in Italy, I tried, what are they called? There's like um, langoustines, I think they're called. Oh, langoustines. Langoustinos? Yeah. Yeah, 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 but they're like little tiny shrimp. Yeah, but yeah. they eat them raw over there. In but France, the color, right? yeah, the color of them is... It's like red pink, but they're still raw. Yeah. And like you put a little bit of lemon and salt on them, you just eat them direct, and it's fucking amazing. Mm. They, they're like so creamy mm. and soft. It's like a, it's literally a raw shrimp that tastes amazing, bro. Wow. And it's fucking perfect. Damn. Yeah. Steak and steak and ceviche. Oh, steak top. and ceviche is the top. Yeah. Top. Top. Could top. you eat steak Mike, and yeah. ceviche together? Yeah, surf and turf. Surf yeah, and turf. I was gonna say yeah, my favorite dish is surf and turf, and then right after that is tamales. Tamales. Yeah. Yeah. Tamales is my second favorite food, bro. Yeah. Damn. Straight up. I think surf and turf. Yeah, favorite uh, meat, steak, yeah. my top. What's your What's your favorite type of tamal? Red meat. Red meat. Yeah, Always. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. It's a battle between He's red meat boil. and green boil. Those you gotta two say one. fire. You gotta. <sighs> Requeson. Requeson. I don't. I don't like cheese like that. I don't fuck with either. Yeah. You guys like the sweet ones? <laughs> Uh, the no. dessert ones, uh, I like. No, I, 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 don't I know. usually do. This is my combo. I do three red, three red ones, or maybe if there's green ones, two two red, one green, yeah. and then a, a sweet one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've learned to enjoy the the um the queso with the the chile. Queso with the chile? Yeah. The requeson, no? Oh, queso uh, fundido? No, no, I'm saying the tamal. Oh. That has filled with like queso, just queso and the chile. Oh, the requeson. Yeah, I, I, I honestly didn't so, know that. I'm not going to lie. So I like I remember when I was younger I was like, "Oh, no, this and that blah blah." But now as like as a grown, I was like, "Yeah, I, I've I been, I've enjoyed it now." Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried it with this new palette I have, so maybe I will like it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like my new palate. I don't know, dude. Like, I've had so the best though. meat in the world. I don't not, know. Nah, actually, that's so true. I think your palate changes every seven years. No, that's a that's a theory. Yeah, I don't know if it's super it, it, true. It, it does. It does. It, it does, does yeah, for sure. I, I didn't yeah. like certain foods that I like when now. I was younger. Now I'm just like, oh, like what I've got. Like I remember when I was younger, I didn't like oysters, and then as I grown up, so it was like five, four years ago, five, I was like, five, oh, I fucking oysters. Or you don't understand oysters. why your tios are biting into a big old jalapeno, bro, and now you're like, oh, yeah, now you you're like, you're like, te falta algo. Yeah, you're good at eating spicy food i love that shit bro yeah, shit. i used to eat takis a bunch so i feel like that got me used like to it made your your, your tongue just yeah like, so like everything that's not spicier than takis is like fuck it it's yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you ever done the paki one chip challenge 
Nah, bro, we, we did that shit. I took half of it, bro. Passing? No, we don't got it anymore, bro. Oh. God damn, Hell, no, I wouldn't do that shit. Logan almost died doing that shit. Yeah, that's like, literally he told everyone to stop filming type shit. Oh wow, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and you guys have a code like because I I feel like in your a code type, word, yeah, like a, like a safe Pineapple. word. Like you guys have like a safe word, like okay, this is not camera anymore. Like yo, this is real. Uh, or is it just like oh, it's usually based on feeling? Out. Like if I feel like I shouldn't be filming, mm -hmm. it's usually I shouldn't be filming. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of the times, the best programming is. The, the, raw the raw uncomfortable stuff mm -hmm. yeah. so like if we know we have final edit at the back i'll just record it and if it's our house our property or it's our mm -hmm. event i'm just record everything type yeah. shit you know so even if it feels uncomfortable i'm, I'm going in but maybe like there's like <laughs> certain topics where you're like even if it's uncomfortable this is not going to come out anyways so yeah yeah, not yeah. film gotcha. but i have the say and not the say but like i'm usually the one orchestrating what needs to be filmed and whatnot if mm -hmm. not gonna be like oh just get this or get yeah, this yeah. you know you know what i know you can't probably talk about it but i just want to mention it was part of the craziest shit you've seen behind the scenes for me personally is when you guys did um the simon tinder date thing <laughs> bro because well, like all, the, all the girls that came up were all adult actresses basically uh -huh. or only fans girls <laughs> so i'm pretty sure the the behind the scenes shits were fucking crazy bro. like what I don't know. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> let his imagination very, flow. Yeah, let my imagination flow. It's a very professional. Set. I think Sky Bree shows her tits or some shit. Yeah, oh, she did. Uh, that's right. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, you, you weren't there. Oh that? yeah, that's true. Because they had a, they had like they had a, you had to go like on their uh, Patreon right to watch the yeah. like uncut one. Yeah, I, that, I was. I yeah. just I was filming, but I was like looking away. You yeah, know? yeah. You just. <laughs> <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> he, he put it on the tripod. <laughs> yeah, tripod. I, I let the editors handle it. Yeah. That's <laughs> Dang. Has there yeah, been yeah. like something where you're just like, okay, yeah, I definitely not recording this. Let me turn, put my camera down. Have there been a situation? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. most of the time. Like, I just, it's just like personal things yeah, that yeah. should mm -hmm. should never be out. It's yeah. just camera down always. Yeah, that's good. Like, there's fun. Like, there's part sometimes where you're like, hey, bro, just edit that out. And you're like, all right, for sure. I'm not editing. Oh, okay, for sure. For I sure. edit the pictures only, mm -hmm. but like videos, I send it out to our editor and yeah. Milo and go back and forth with like creative on it and stuff. Did you already know how to edit these like the, your style photos before you got in? Or I was didn't. I started off doing videos for Logan, just Dang. purely videos, and wow. I had my camera and I was like, let me take some pictures of some random shit, and it was like some whack ass camera, but I guess they came out good and he liked it, so I just started doing more camera stuff, more camera stuff, and then he invested into a bigger camera, which is the one I use now, but like just. Picture editing pictures just every single week. Even for impulsive, I do their photos every single week. Yeah. So that that kind of that kind of taught me what I how I like to get it and how I like my photos to look okay. in a certain yeah. way. You know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just I came in as video, started doing photo for him, and now I'm doing photos mostly all the time. He did for Sarah, he does. Last yeah, they, that yeah. was cool. Was that last two nights ago? Last yeah, last two, two nights, nights ago. Yeah. Well, because I connected with them in PR, I was kind of yeah. kind of locked in with them. And I, I told them that I was going to be in town for one of their last shows. And mm -hmm. I guess they got me out there and it was pretty fucking dope. That's dope. dope. It was bro. sick. I wanted to ask you, it's a two-part question. Um, you know, you met many uh, famous people, many like fucking big people in different industries. I just wanted to ask you, like, first part is who is like the craziest, biggest, you're like, holy fuck. I'm like shaking hands with this guy. I met this guy, person. And two, like, who was the one you're most geeked out for? Damn, those two are the same person. Oh, okay. I think. Uh, being able to work with Rey Mysterio mm -hmm. is crazy in itself because he's one of, if not the best re uh, luchador wrestler of all time. Mm -hmm. Him being as humble as he is and watching him since I was little and just me being friends with him. Mm -hmm. Me, at the end of the match he did with Logan, he was able to gift me one of his masks that signed. Was yeah, I saw that. Put it on. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> nah, it's hella small. It's hella small, so it, um, it didn't really fit. Can we just talk about how Ray has, like, the fountain of youth, bro? Because have you ever seen his face throughout no, his like whole bro? Like he's he's young. He, he looks, young looks like he's still, like, maybe in his early 30s, bro. And he can still go. I, I, I asked him, like... When do you like when return. do you decide to hang it up and straight up like when do you how do you not let an injury hang it up for you mm. and then he goes I try not to think about that and in my head I'm like fuck he really fucking loves this shit that's bro and that that's dedication because really bro like, if you know shit. him dude he's had multiple 
injuries and surgeries on his knee, bro. And their knees are like, like yeah, that's yeah. like, you know, once you fuck that up, it's like not the same. But the fact that he's had multiple fucking surgeries and injuries on that he same knee. He just had knee, one too on the another knee. Yeah, bro. So it's like, and the fact that he's like, nah, I still want to go. I know. It's like, insane. I still have a he lot of years. He still wants that, to that's go. That's crazy, bro. Jeez. Crazy, bro. And I fucking admire him for that because as a Mexican, he was able to do it and be the biggest in his craft. And even even though now he can hang it up and call it an amazing fucking career, he, he still, still wants, wants to more. do it because he loves that shit. Yeah. And that's inspiring as fuck, really bro. I just want him to have one more world title run. Just one. He, Give me one. That US champ was kind of all he needed. I know, but I'm saying like, because he was disrespected <laughs> when he was a world heavyweight champion. I remember when I was younger and I was watching that a, shit. When he won that, when he won that 50 pounder being a world heavyweight champion, how believable is that? Yeah, that's wild. Still. <laughs> that's why I think the disrespect. He's very him. technical and skillful in the ring. That's what I'm saying. He is. He is. He's a high flyer. Very exciting. Well, he needs one more. I think he needs he... one more. I think people no, because people want one more from him. Because I was like, which one? Um, I think at this point it could be Seth's title. It could be one of Roman's title. Like, of course, I'm pretty sure not gonna, he's not gonna be the one to you know. I think uh, this last one was one of his last ones. Oh, I think. I know he is up there. Unless the because it's all about story and yeah, storyline. What and fits at a specific yeah. time? So like maybe if it fits storyline wise later on in yeah in the career, maybe they'll put it on him. But I just want him to have one more, bro. Because like when I remember when the he first US became, one wasn't enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about like you know like the top dog title. You know like the the number well, one. What are you trying to say about the US champ? Damn, Damn. it's not a top dog That's title. Top dog He's title. gonna put on the mask right now, bro. Relax. Yeah, <laughs> You're fucking jump that the, but you know what I'm that saying. That the US champ is a. Uh, it's a, I don't know. What is this a Mickey Mouse? A Mickey Mouse title? Is that no, what you're saying right bro. now? They just gave it to Logan because it was like it didn't mean shit. That's crazy. Bro, I'm just, How about you go get the title? Why are you trying to fucking gaslight me right now, bro? You know what I mean? Hit him with what I mean. Because I'm pretty sure even Logan himself, he's thinking to himself, "Oh, I want the world heavyweight title." Of course he does. Of course, that's my point. That's my point. Because when he won that shit back in 2006, after that incredible Royal Rumble fucking win, when he was the first man to come in and he won that shit all. Dude, they totally disrespect him on his title run, bro. He Who? was getting uh, Rey Mysterio. Oh, yeah. He was getting beat every week after he was World Heavyweight Champion. They treat him like he was just like the second guy. To Even everything. now, he's, they still do that to him. That's but because up. he's That's a point. baby face, they call him the good guy. Yeah, the good guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I guess you're right. The U.S. champ before Logan wasn't <laughs> wasn't that prestigious at, the, at that moment in time, mm -hmm. and because. Logan won it. I feel like it's it's yeah, people want it. people, want, people it want it from him now. Yeah, yeah, because he and he takes it everywhere, bro. And he, he beat puts, he beat Rey Mysterio to get it. He, yes, that's why Fair it's even square. more prestigious. That's he why like, he got it from one of the goats, bro. Yeah, it's that and him showing it off. Like if it's the top title. Yeah, I've seen your stories, bro. Who take that's dope. Everywhere. Too. It's the cool. dedication he wants to take to it everywhere. That. Yeah, that's dope. He wants to make it a prestige title that everyone wants to get from him, yeah. which is what we're that's going cool. for. Yeah. You know? I'll, I'll try that. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're we're going we're wrapping up to the end of the show, but we let our people on our broadcast channel know <laughs> for one more that hour. you're coming on. Uh, so if you guys ever want to be part of the conversation, join our broadcast channel on IE and Friends, and you can ask all these fun questions. So we got a little speed round for you. We're just gonna ask you some of these questions that people asked. Oh shit! They, we'll people go. ask these? Yeah, yeah, to me? Yeah, yeah to you. Who to ask these? Uh, just people our, on our just broadcast. People on our broadcast channel. We let and them know. What, it, what was the prompt for this? I said that we're having you on the show. Anything you want to ask? Okay, okay, them. okay. So first one, how do you get yourself on the map to work for big people? Damn, I got, I don't know, bro. Cause I got lucky, honestly. Mm -hmm. I got, I got lucky and the first job that I got was the biggest one yeah, this early. So I didn't, I didn't put myself on the map for him to get me. Yeah. So I, I'm not, I'm not sure if I have the right answer, the right experience for that. I think what it was and like, I think you did, what you did was you saw what everybody was doing and you're like, nah, I can't do it that way. You went to his email. So I think uh, maybe reverse engineering versus like start from the top or start from the back. Mm -hmm. Start start in a different location mm -hmm. where everybody's starting. To get yourself out there? Yeah. Just stand out. Yeah. Always stand, stand out. out. This fucking, this community is so oversaturated in every single topic. So mm -hmm. if you can stand out at least a little bit, it's yeah. going to be a good start for you. That's a, another thing I did actually a long time ago. I remember some girl on Twitter, she was talking about like, oh, someone DM me. I knew she was gonna get a bunch of DMs, so I emailed her. And that shit worked. <laughs> and so, it worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Email. Cold, cold emails, cold bro. Email. Cold there emails you. are golden, bro. There you go. I think Shoot that's your shot. Shoot your shot. Who stores that can happen? 
No. no. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Move on. Right. I'm asking a lot of these questions, bro. We've already he's already answered a lot. He answered of these. I know he answered yeah. most of them. So the one I was seeing right now, that's probably I mean, someone's asking what's your favorite prime flavor. <laughs> uh, that's the only one we yeah, haven't yeah, answered. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, this one's my favorite energy, the original, and then strawberry or meta moon are my favorite hydration. Strawberry is cool. Strawberry is amazing. And then if you guys um, want to talk to people at the gym, tropical. <laughs> tropical. Um, <laughs> if, uh, we can ask you this. Uh, we kind of talked about not really, but if you don't want, if you don't answer it, it's cool. Of course. Uh, when someone's asking craziest thing you've seen behind the scenes, of like anything, I guess. Uh. Damn, craziest thing I've seen behind the scenes. Just like the biggest personalities mm. being humans. Mm. Uh, Not, cool. You know, that's cool. People, people think that these big people or these rich ass people are like have different lives as everyone. But like when you hang around them, everyone's the same. Everyone's human. Everyone is cool with you. If if they are cool, because some people are stuck up. But yeah. like most people are the same, bro. And they're humble. So like you're you're chilling in that regard, you know. Sick. Nice. And it was so good dope, to see people that other people idolize be human. Be human yeah. You know? Like larger than life characters. Yeah. And people are like, holy fuck. And they're like, oh, this guy's just, he's the dope ass person. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That's sick. Exactly. Yeah. So that kind of gets me in a different perspective too when I meet everybody else. You know, mm -hmm. everyone's the same. I see. Yeah, that's dope. Cool. Oh, are you still, I have a question for Saul. Mm. Are you still blocked? Oh yeah, I guess I can say something now. <laughs> I what? totally forgot about that. So Logan Paul has me blocked on Twitter. <laughs> you said some fuck shit. Probably. What'd you say? I don't know. This was like long time ago. I really like, don't know. What year was this? Like what? Honestly, I think this was during like that whole like um, Japan stuff. Yeah, I think it was like in the. I mean, you era. have your right to say what you yeah, had to say yeah. during that time. Yeah. So. Yeah. You probably said some fuck shit. Yeah, I probably said some fuck shit a long time ago. I don't know what I said. Um, I was a little. I felt like uh, I had FOMO during like this whole like Dylan Dennis thing and Logan Paul thing. You weren't seeing anything because I wasn't seeing anything. <laughs> I was like, "Bro, what the fuck?" <laughs> you had a burner. Everyone yeah. was posting everything though. Yeah. So you kind of saw it. Yeah, bro, I saw that, whole, that whole thing was fucking. I bet that was crazy. Yeah, we bonkers, bro. Yeah, no. This, honestly, this episode can go on forever. Bro. I want to <laughs> get in the ring. Nah, <laughs> no, wait. Let's ask, so you know, you part of the whole you know uh, boxing scene now, right, and everything. Um, but we wanted to ask you if you were put into a match, mm, mm, yeah, that's who a good one. would you like to box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's gonna be your first opponent? Who's your, like your you're influencer training. Training. or someone? I train you're... just because everyone around me is training. There's trainers. They teach me how to do shit. I, I kind of like. It. I love this shit. Can you yeah. fuck someone up? And I'm down. To, <laughs> I'm down to get in the ring. Even like our own teams, like uh, Jake's team and Logan's team. I mean, Logan's team is only me, but like they do this. This Paul Bras, they call it, oh, where we fight against each other. Oh, so like nice. last year, I fought against Jake's assistant, and like we cool. just fight against each other because like at the end we're like cool as fuck with each other. Yeah, yeah. But that fight went good. So, but I don't know how. I don't know, bro. It's just like a whole stadium full of people watching you fight, bro. It's kind of scary. Bro. Who would you be scary. down to? Be like, hey, let's go like eight I mean, rounds or call something. someone out right now. Call them out right eight now. Eight rounds. Call them, call I wouldn't call anyone. I don't have any animosity towards anyone, or I don't hate friendly anyone. fate. Friendly like, fate. I feel like that's what you need to market it. Yeah. But the way I would market it is. Going after someone else's videographer. That'd be funny, bro. <laughs> you know? Like Nelk, like like Nelk Nelk boys, like the Nelk. Like so that's the way to market this. Like Logan's videographer versus Face Rugs videographer. Ah, <laughs> Fanatics. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? There it is. There it is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What's his name? Fana I don't know. I'm not sure, to be honest, I forget. But like. He he looks like my size, my weight. Yeah, and that could be a good marketing ploy with Logan versus Faze's team, team going against each other. Oh, that'd be mm, fun. Okay. I'd be down, but like getting in the ring is kind of fucking. Scary. Unless there's like a cool bag behind it, where yeah. like I'm, I'm doing it yeah. for the experience on the bag. But other than that, it's like kind of fucking scary. What'd be the bag? What'd be the number? I don't know, bro. Like hundred k or like nah, bigger less, bag? less, 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 like fifty k. Yeah, around those. Fifty k sounds good. Yeah, I feel like so the like to get knocked part. out in front of millions of people. That's my point. I was like, in front that's of the scariest the, part. In front of all the I, I, I have to know that I'm gonna win. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, not like rigged, but like I. You gotta know you train more, and I'm like, gonna yeah. fuck them up. Yeah, okay. possible memes coming no, after bro. you get knocked out yeah. or something, bro. Honestly, I think that's why the Mexican picture. fighters are like the best. They're ruthless. Machista, puro machista, and very like ego is like I'm not gonna let all these people see me get knocked out. So I'm not. I'm not gonna lose. That's what gets you knocked out sometimes, though, because the best way to fight is having fun. And mm -hmm. if you're thinking about getting knocked everyone out. getting knocked out, which is what I'm going to be fucking thinking about while fighting, yeah. it's not going to go well, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, it's not going to go well. <laughs> like, have you seen when, like, that guy falls, like, off of, like, that top story? 
and like he eats shit and then the the, the girl comes out and she's like are you okay and he's on the ground he's like yeah oh, well, and he gets he gets up with every shit. fucking inch of testosterone like, in his body yeah. he's like yeah it's, it's just scary bro i don't <laughs> be getting knocked down from millions of people is yeah. fucking your terrifying. homie's gonna be sending that shit in the group chat terrifying. all the time but the, like the, at the end of the day you got in the ring and you kind of get a, a big up because of that but like yeah. still you got knocked down the meme bro. is him on the ground with the camera you on got his knocked head. out with the, <laughs> <laughs> with the prime bottle right next yeah, to you, bro. Yeah. on the floor on the mat no oh, mom is. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your time, bro. Thank this you, was Kevin. a fun time. I really appreciate you guys, bro. So this yeah. is my first part, and I think it went okay. You think amazing. No, bro. it went amazing, great. bro. I think you it did went good, in, bro. So. Yeah. Definitely an inspiration for a lot of us, and 100%. It, yeah, makes me, it makes me happy to see you. Thank when you, you come out like in, your, in the cameos, I'm like, Kevin's right there. And I sent him a picture. Yeah. I'm like, there you are. I, I hope in one or two years, I get to come back and talk about Oh, new shit I've been a part of that'd be fun bro, come back every year just come back just yeah. I'm back, back every time I come back to LA yeah. but it, I don't think I've ever done that but like I'll be back eventually no yeah we're glad you came bro thank you for coming cause thank like this is something that we've been wanting to do for like for a while, while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah we met you two years ago that was sick yeah. as fuck that's, and like that's crazy that's two years ago that. that's what I said two yeah years. it was two years ago bro 2021 dude that's when we met him yeah what? and then we're like dude like we're like every time you came by we're like oh bro hopefully you can come down and i know you couldn't because you were really busy but it was dope that you're able two to two years ago yeah dude <laughs> yeah, i you. was fat dog. <laughs> <laughs> yo, <laughs> <you're the one. laughs> yo dog i was a balloon you bro you fucking were bro look yeah. at you now bro you yeah. look fucking amazing i'm dog. nowhere where i want to be but i appreciate yeah, but that bro, bro look yeah, at yeah, the fucking yeah. no, progress, no, no, progress you made bro it's, a, it's inspiring it's a bunch of people watching too bro. Sure. logan help me box dog or something jake somebody dude put me in the ring dude help me box like I'll get in that bro, boxing shape, bro. That'd be sick. Boxing gets me in shape bro. real fucking fast. Yeah, so if bro. you do that, maybe maybe something will come up in the future. I need some good <laughs> trainers, bro. I don't need someone just be like, uh, yeah, go run, dude. Go on YouTube. All that. Watch YouTube. Go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right, YouTube, bro. Come on. YouTube, no, YouTube University, bro. If you wanna, if you wanna let the people know where they can find you, all your social medias and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm actually another reason why I came on here and it's perfect timing was because I wanna start doing my own stuff. I'm always behind the scenes and I. I never saw myself as being like an influencer, like doing my own videos, but I do want to start making my own content because nice. like I said, I've never took advantage of the opportunities that I'm in. And this is a big opportunity to make something big yeah. on the side for myself that I like. So yeah, I'm going to start doing more TikTok stuff, more Instagram real stuff, and maybe do like short films here and there cool. when I have yeah. free time to do so. And you'll be able to find those like on my Instagram and TikTok, uh, Instagram being Kevin G. M O V and then TikTok being Kevin G G E E D P. So yeah, you can just find that everywhere. Hit me up. Awesome. Links in the bio. Go click them. Uh thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Also, Spotify Wrapped just uh released. So thank you guys for everybody. Uh, a lot of a lot of top podcasts. We uh thank for if you guys listen this whole year, you guys are amazing. Thank you all for sharing your, your screenshots. So I appreciate you all. Make sure to go listen on Spotify. Uh, leave a review. If you made it this far, leave a review and your favorite part of the show. And we'll be choosing a random winner to win 100 bucks. And if you're still here, don't forget to like. This is going to be the most liked episode. There it is. Oh, nah, shit. Yeah, But where can they find you, Cs? Uh, today, you guys can... Um, <laughs> uh, you guys can find me at I Know Caesar on IG. Um, like Kevin, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing my whole training shit for running a marathon. So you'll Sick. be seeing see more. That. more Congrats, I'm gonna start posting more reels and shit like that. I'm just trying to like get all the like. It's kind of awkward. Like, it kind is. Of, just yeah, do gotta, it. Like, you just gotta that. do it, bro. And then especially because like you're running, so like my heart rate's up. So like I can't really stop and record something, <laughs> yeah. you know. That's but yeah, you guys will see more of that shit coming up soon. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Aaron, where can they find oh, you? Oh, yeah. So before I do that, I just wanted to, again, congratulate you, bro, for thank all your you, success. Bro, we've been like, Kevin your today. Your <laughs> bro, 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 he you, deserves bro. it, dude. He deserves <laughs> it. Fuck yeah, dude. If someone deserves the sex right now, the, the <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo, let him know. The success, bro, is a, a dude with a hard work ethic that's, you know, putting that Mexican culture out there with, like, a mainstream audience that probably doesn't know anything about us. So, shout outs to you for that, bro. Thank you, bro. And Thank for you, your bro. future success, too. It's and gonna, you and your team, bro. It's going to get crazier next year. I'm going oh, yeah. to do all out. Yeah, see, nice. what, see, so, what it, see where it takes me and how. Hope more success for you guys and the team. And uh, also, I wanted to take the time to pay respects to one of the best people ever. Ten years in the service, dude. <laughs> Fucking just ultimate. I remember just seeing her. Mm -hmm. Dude, her prime years were all 10 years. She had the best fucking just dude, she's a goaded. Like you cannot you just can't debate with me on this. She once told me where Iowa 15 was. Yeah, yeah dude, she did 10 Black Friday tours. Um, you she know. She missed this one sadly, but 
Dude, the amount of bags she scanned, the amount of items she can scan in a minute, just untouched, dude. Shout outs to the one and only Gail Lewis, 844 Morris, Morrison, Illinois, man. Just <laughs> good night. Gail Lewis, you are the fucking goat. Oh my God. Why are you laughing? I don't know what this is about. I thought it was a porn star the whole time. <laughs> Shout out to Gail Lewis. Good, Gail good night. Lewis, you thank you for your service. Go. Thank you for thank your you, Gail. service. Everybody in the comments, put thank you, Gail Lewis. If you made it this far, put down thank, thank you, Gail, Gail Lewis, Lewis in thank the you, comments. Gail Lewis. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, arriba las chivas. Arriba las chivas, puto. Oh, yeah. Arriba las chivas. Cut that out. Everybody underscore IE. Follow me there. Follow me there. Arriba la America. Arriba las chivas. Oh, hell, I'm out. <laughs>